And then I'm there going like, I went from like a, the a garter snake, which is like a small kind of grass snake, to like, I started buying like 10 foot Burmese pythons. And one of these old rotary machines that, you know, with like the, the, the shimmer metallic wrap round that they used to buy <laughs> yeah, at the back yeah. of like Skin Deep magazine or something like that. And he was like, oh yeah, just crank it up to like 12 volts and just let them have it. <laughs> that was his yeah. way of telling Mate, me to pack a car. A lot of people do that now, don't yeah. they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had a crazy past two years, uh, massive life change ups. And man, like, I've been in some dark places and my animals have kept me going. They've mm. kept me, literally kept me going. I think this is weird. Like sometimes when I'm tattooing, like <laughs> in the day, I'm just tattooing my customer and I'm like, my job's really weird. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the causing same. pain on yeah. someone, yeah. I'm making them bleed and, and they're paying me for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want other people to enjoy this, you know? And, mm. and sure enough, I do. Like now I get people messaging me daily saying like, oh, you're, you, you've inspired me to get out of my bike. You know, like people, like they've got a bike and they haven't used it for months. And, it, and they're like, oh, I've watched one of your videos. I've gone out and got on my bike. I'm like, mate, I, when I hear that, it's I'm crazy. Like, it's amazing. Oh, I, I, I honestly wouldn't be the person I was today without Toto, you know? Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm Alex Lloyd and this is a 21st century tattoo. Yeah, nice one. Nipper, Tom, thank you so much for uh, being on the podcast. Yeah. Um, it's good that's to be down here. Uh, I've been looking forward to this for a while, so cheers for kind of giving up your Sunday, man. Yeah, that's cool. Um, let's start with you, Nipper. I want to kind of get into really like your style, you know, custom lettering yeah. and of the occasional black and grey piece here and there. I do black and grey, yeah. I do black and grey as well. My black and grey is more of my bread and butter money you know that's that's kind of that keeps my business going it pays my bills i am more passionate about the lettering mm. because i can be more free with it like we kind of spoke briefly earlier about me wanting to freehand stuff on the day yeah rather than preparing loads for the client i think sometimes i don't actually work great preparing i end up over preparing too much mm. you know so it's nice for me to be more spontaneous and just like freehand something like straight onto the body, it fits the area better. Yeah, I can have more freedom with it. The client kind of it it kind of forces the client into a little bit more trust in in, in your artwork as well. I think. Yeah, and like making it like with them, you know, and kind of going with the vibe like we were talking a little bit about before we started mm. recording. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. I'm, I'm like I overthink, man. So like I can't I can't plan to well I yeah. plan like in, I don't know I set goals and stuff. Yeah, but like withdrawing if I would just be constantly tweaking it, and then like, you end up eating into your own time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you end up having too you put too much in, don't you? Yeah, um, I do. You know, I see. I'm like halfway in between. Like I I've started. I used to do the same. I always used to. I'd like wait till my customer come in in the morning, and then I'd just sit there. Obviously, it's a bit different for like what I do. But like mine's more like computer based design. But I'd like get them like sit there and then I'd be like on the computer for like I don't know hours you know yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. just sitting there like is he gonna start to earn me or what <laughs> so like I realised that that was a problem I'm like oh, I don't know like you know some customers feel like you're wasting their time Yeah. so then now I've got a little bit I'm sort of halfway in between so like the way I do it is I'll I'll actually um, plan the design the night before okay. so like literally just the night before so then that way it's like not enough time to pick it apart but also, I'm a little bit more prepared, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not like they're going to take it to someone, but if there's any f little tweaks that need, be, need yeah, to be made. Yeah. Oh, and that as well, because I'm not being funny. If you if you give someone a design a week beforehand, they're going to show it to all of their family and every, like, Tom, Dick and Harry who hasn't yeah. got a clue. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to go, that's wrong, that's wrong. That, yeah. you know I mean, before, you know, you've got to do your whole design again. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. It's like, if you, I, I used to show clients, like, designs a week before mm. their booking. Yeah, and that gives them too much time to start changing their mind. They go off of their first original idea that they've had, you know, embedded in them. Oh, they've been waiting a year or two years, maybe more, or maybe just a couple of months. But they've yeah. had this idea and they've fixated on it. And then when you start showing them too early before, they they kind of go off their own ideas completely and they start picking holes in things and, oh, can we just tweak this and tweak that and tweak this? And then by the end of it, you've got a completely different design. Yeah. And We've all had that before. Yeah. Jesus, like someone going, oh, I'm sure. Change my mind, like, yeah. 
<laughs> I've just stayed up until three in the morning, you know? Yeah, it all comes back to this overthinking and I think anyone would overthink. Yeah. Like, I think part of the magic of tatt getting tattooed, particularly, like, even when I've gone to other artists, like, you just trust in their ability and let them do it. Oh, yeah. Um, do you think, like, there's certain clientele and maybe as tattoos are getting more popular, there's more and more people that are a little bit more fussy but don't really know what they want? And it's like... Uh, yeah, I do. And I think, too, I think as well, where tattooing is a lot more mainstream these days, um, and the industry is massively swamped with people that just just want to be tattooists because it's fashionable these days as well. Yeah. That's another thing that goes into it is that the clients, they kind of end up telling you how it's going to be kind of too much. Like, it's, yeah, I, mm. I understand we're putting something on their body. Mm. It's for them. It's for the rest of their life. It's fine. I understand that. But don't tell me how to do my job so much. Mm. You yeah. know, like you've come to me for a certain reason. You've come to me because you like my artwork. Yeah. Like, let me do my thing. Let me, g I'm trying to give the client every tattoo I do, whether it's like, I do loads of script work, but each script piece I do, I still try and tweak it a little bit different, a little bit hit. Yeah. It's going to, I want it to look like my style. because I want someone mm. to recognize that it's my work, but if, if there's so many people these days that are just, you know, they want what their mates got. Mm. and exactly copied to a T. Yeah. And it's, like, it's, yeah, it's directly I just, copied. I can't stand it. You know? Yeah, man. It's a really tricky one. But like, I guess it's, there's, it's, it's a, it's, is it a minority? Maybe it is. I don't know. But I'm just grateful, I guess, for the work. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just nice that, to be able to kind of create something custom for people. Yeah. Usually I find it's with the first timers. Once you've kind of instilled that yeah. trust, it's calm. Yeah, um, they say a little bit more, don't they? Yeah, for sure. Um, I want to talk a little bit about like your work and relationship as well, because obviously you like your work is this is why I'm here. You know, your work is sick, and you guys obviously Thank work you. so Cheers. well together. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about like your style, like more large scale black and grey realism, kind of how you how you kind of ended up down that route, and maybe how your guys work, like how you intertwine that work. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I guess like the la the large scale stuff. I, f I feel like for a lot of artists, it's kind of a natural thing, isn't it? Like, y you know, you start off like from when you first start tattooing. It's like you, you start off doing little things, didn't you? And then you just get bigger and bigger. And then, mm. I don't know. I guess it's kind of a natural evolution of your work. You do tend to just get bigger and bolder with everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like uh, with some of the like real super like. You know, like, for instance, like some of them massive roses that I, I've done mm. in the past, like, that was just, like, you know, something I, I hadn't really seen. Like, I'd, I'd, I'd seen, you know, people do, like, big back pieces with, like, a rose. And yeah. I thought, yeah, that's sick. But then I started thinking, like, well, how can you do that? on other parts of the body and it still look cool you where know? it wouldn't usually go like I think I saw like he did a big one almost on a stomach yeah um, yeah yeah it looked really yeah, nice yeah just like I, just, I like you know trying to sort of find something a bit different because it is so hard to do stuff different these days and yeah. like you know especially yeah. especially with my style of work it's you know there is a lot of people doing it um, and you know so it does kind of make it even harder in a way to do something original so, mm. so yeah when I first started doing them especially them oversized roses that was like i was just trying to think a little bit outside the box and but also something that i thought was you know a, a lot of them end up on women because like you know well, women like roses then it's, you know? it's, it's, it's a classic yeah, yeah. thing but yeah. um you know it, and, it, and it does they they end up sort of fitting the, the female body a bit you know nicer a bit like, better, yeah. um but yeah some of them ones i've done in the past like you know i love that kind of stuff you know it's just like it's it, it's got that kind of, I guess, wow factor to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, what say someone comes to you yeah, with an ideal project? What's that thing like? What would you want to be working on right now? What for me personally? Yeah. I mean, do you know what, man? Like for me, it's like it changes so much. Like you know, maybe a couple of years ago, yeah, it would have been them, you know, big roses. But mm. now, like in all honesty, like I just, um, I just like doing nice, clean you know black and grey realism man. like even just straight up portraits like yeah. I, I just I, I love getting into a, a, you know even like someone's kid or something it doesn't even have to be like a pop culture you know uh, portrait like I do like doing stuff like that because again it's got that wow factor yeah. you know if you do a portrait of like John Travolta people know bang that's straight John Travolta you know yeah. so it's got that wow factor but I also do I get a kick out of you know, I'll, I'll do my customer like a portrait of their kid and then that moment when I go see them, look it in the mirror and mm. they're just like, you just see it in their eyes, like they're just so blown away. They're like, 
that's my kid. You yeah. know, like that for me, I love that. Like, yeah, what a sick thing to be able to give for pe- to people, you know. Exactly, man. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot to be said for that black and grey realism style. Mm. I was actually talking with the previous guest about how, like, in the creative sense, where all tattoo artists can respect and appreciate other artist styles, even if it's not necessarily oh, the sort of thing sure. that they would create. Yeah. Um, but like some clients you know, certain genres or styles of tattooing are a little bit more niche because they're not as kind of, people are not as used to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I like, I love the, I love the realism style and I'm trying to kind of do a little bit of a semi-realistic illustrative sort of thing and just try and like flow with it. Yeah, nice. Um, talking about flowing with it, then yours kind of script stuff. I know you've got a graffiti background. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Has yeah, the, has right, the, has the obsession always been script and creating that or was it tattooing? I just I fell in love with tattooing. I, I got my first tattoo when I was about fifteen, and I yeah <laughs> I did yeah. in my mate's kitchen. Where? Yeah, yeah in my where? mate's kitchen um, by a traveller, and his name was Tattoo John, and he used to wear crocodile skin shoes. <laughs> and that is not even a lie. <laughs> That's not even a lie. And he was smoking a fag. It was real like it was so. Oh, oh, we need a picture of that. Have you, have you still got? No, the I covered it up. Uh, it was on my shoulder here. I blacked it out. Crocodile but, John, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, um, Sounds like a legend. No, it was back, he used to clean his he used to clean his um, his tubes and stuff in a baby steriliser rather than an auto. <laughs> that sounds, <laughs> that sounds quite a dodgy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought I was cool having it done at the time. But, um, <laughs> Probably was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was fucking cool, man. Yeah, man. yeah but it's... Uh, yeah, I was, I was way too young. And I, I don't know, I kind of... You know, back in the day when Miami Inc. and everything started up on the telly, it started to become a little bit more mainstream mm. and... Um, I was obsessed with it. I've always been obsessed with art and doodling. Even in school, like I was, yeah. my English teacher would let me draw in the back of my book for the first 20 minutes of the lesson because okay. otherwise I wouldn't pay attention. Right, okay. You know? I yeah. wouldn't. It was like, for me to get anything theory related down or, you know, anything that was past me just doodling on something, yeah. I didn't want to know. Um, what until you'd like initiated that kind of creative side yeah 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 until I'd kind of like settled myself in and then I'd start you know my brain would start soaking other stuff up you know mm. I kind of had to be in my own little world for a bit um, but yeah so when I, I I started getting tattooed and then I started hanging around at a tattoo shop that my uncle um, got tattooed at mm. um, and I just become obsessive I fell in love with it I fell in love with the history of it the culture the the edginess of it like Back then, I've been telling 13 years now, and like back then, it was still, we still had a little bit of that nostalgia and taste of the old school tattoo life and what shops used to be like. They were still flash on the walls, and yeah. you know, people were still, you were still getting that kind of clientele coming in. Yeah, everything was walking. The shop stunk of Dettol and, and bleach and yeah. green soap, you know. I do remember. Like, I mean, I'm only five years, but I remember. Yeah, I and there, there the was that like. nostalgia there, and I just oh, I fell in love with it. It was something like, it was almost like there was this world that I'd entered that was like when you're a kid and you you might not fit into places and you're trying to fit in somewhere yeah. and you you end up creating your own little false reality sometimes, you know, because you feel like you're accepted and a part of something. Mm. Tattooing was that for me. It was like I was doing loads of crazy shit with my friends when I was younger, you know, partying, raving, camping, this, that, like outdoors, like loads of crazy shit. I was always doing something and, and tattooing just consumed me it was like my new obsession i'm obsessive with stuff anyway and it it just it got hold of me and i couldn't i couldn't not mm. you know even yeah. before i got my apprenticeship i would turn up at the shop and annoy the shit out of the guy mm. can i go and get your teas can i do your drawing can i mop the floor okay can i do this can i do that i just wait around in reception all because day. you wanted it yeah because i wanted it yeah I, just, I wanted it more than anything and i'd gone from job to job to job mm. doing multiple different things carpentry i was a plumbers mate I was an electrician's mate I've done a bit of painting with my dad you know it was yeah. everything but I just I got obsessed with it and it's, once I got my claws into it I just I, I, I don't know I just I had to drive drive it and I was still graffitiing a little bit at the time nothing major and I actually used to graffiti more characters rather than lettering so mm. I wasn't even massive into lettering until I, I got into tattooing into until I got my apprenticeship and then I really found the love for tattoo. And I remember fa- I found uh, the old um, Boog Gentleman's Flash book okay. in the studio. And that was like, that was like the holy grail for me. I I'd just seen something yeah. that was like, wow. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah. I, 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 I was looking at Sailor Jerry stuff, all that old room, yeah, traditional, yeah, yeah. traditional American. Um, but yeah, I'd, you obviously you kind of got into the graffiti side of stuff. Yeah, I did. Um, 
in terms of actually going and, and that kind of developing it into script, I guess I kind of want to know, because it's a, it's a, it's a skill. There's a, there's almost like a theory and a knowledge behind it, isn't there? That yeah, you there, is. To, there is. I mean, you know, Connor Pembroke, he's done my yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. I was having a chat with him about like, um, yeah, you're having to understand the way letters all work together. And uh, yeah, everything has, uh, to be honest, I feel like I, now I would like to actually go and study a little bit more of like actual typography or mm. a little bit more, you know, um, <clears throat> real knowledge based, side of things of, of, of lettering yeah. um, because I I feel like I, I don't know enough and I, I know I don't know enough you know and knowledge is power you, you always you're always learning especially in this trade of course you know especially in this industry and everything it's, you're never there's never something that you can't improve on um, but I think going into the script um, was like I, I had a massive influence when I was a kid my mum used to um, as a side business, she used to do like wedding displays. Yeah. And she used to write on the balloons with the paint markers. And she had this crazy neat handwriting, almost almost like nigh on like a cursive font. Yeah. And it used to blow my mind. And when I was younger, I always struggled with my reading and writing. So when I got the tattoo apprenticeship and I started, I wanted to be a new school artist at first because mm. it kind of come off the back of the graffiti character style. You know, it was yeah. that stylized, exaggerated faces and creatures and characters and stuff. And yeah. but I, I always had this fascination of the 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 crispness of clean lettering and mm. the finesse to it. And it was it was almost therapeutic to me. When I started practicing it, I'd done a little bit. Yeah. Because the shop that I started in was just a walking shop. So I had to do whatever came in the door. You know, mm. I didn't have a choice, and 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 I think that's really great for building up fundamentals, anyway. Yeah, that's your, that's that your bread and butter. It is how it, it really, should be. It really should be. It is. You know, is. Like, it and, really, and it really should be. I'll do that. I'm, I'm very old school. With yeah, that opinion, man. Yeah, like, no, it yeah. should be like that. Too and many was, people get handed to me. Oh, it's just yeah, it's too. Yeah, mm. we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can go off on that. We'll do it. We'll do it. I can go off on that. I can feel alright. I can't be like that. But. It's, uh, I had that passion there and then I, I, I did loads of colour work started off and then I kind of started doing a bit of black and grey and with the black and grey came the lettering yeah. and then I I was amazed by watching guys freehand lettering on mm. and I always used to say to myself, oh, I'm never going to be that good to do that. Oh, I wish I could do that. And it's like the, the more it slowly sunk in was like, no, you got to work at this. And everyone starts somewhere. The, poss the yeah. possibilities are endless for they what are. you want to do. You yeah. only get out what you put in. Yeah. Bottom line, that's yeah. it. You only get out what you put in. And I grafted my ass off. Like uh, the guy that I worked for, that I first started working for, he would, I remember one day he'd he come up to me. I was doing some lettering. He was like, I don't want you to do lettering today. I want you to do it, draw me a Japanese dragon. Mm. I was like, all right, I don't really want to draw a fucking Japanese <laughs> dragon, but I'll do it. Yeah. You know, because you just do what you're told. Mm. So I was drawing this dragon head. And he come up, he went, oh, yeah, that's good, yeah. Shit. Sorry. Ripped it in half. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I wanted to grab him, you know. Mm. Draw me again. <clears throat> All right, do it again. 20 minutes later, he comes over. Oh, it looks good. Look. And I'd got past a little bit more from where he just ripped up. Fine. However, ripped that one up. Yeah. And this went on throughout the day to the point where I was like, I wanted to smash the shop up. I was fucking fuming. Mm. Um but by the end of that day, probably wasn't the best way for him to teach me it, but by the end of that day, I could draw a dragon yeah. head in nothing. Of course. You know? I, was, I had a very similar... Repetition, repetition, yeah, repetition. Very similar experience with roses. Yeah. And like, I just draw like roses, like stem, head roses or stem roses. Yeah. And yeah, just kind of, and then, but trying to not, I was looking a lot at like trad references because that was yeah. all I had. Yeah. And then once you start like exploring and seeing what other stuff's out there and pulling inspiration, you can just kind of let I yourself. think, no, anyway, when you start tattooing, you're, you're, you always go with the most basic, simplified images. So that's why a lot of people are shown traditional work straight away. Mm. Even though traditional is not the, the easiest style, it's, it's really fucking hard to make something look traditional yeah. and not make it look cartoon or too illustrated. And clean. You know? Yeah. And um, it's... It was a similar thing with the letter and it was the more I kind of was looking at people who were coming up and making the letter and seem big, like, you know, Sleeps, Norm, yeah. um, Big Me's another massive one of my influences. I had his book for years, I had Sleeps book for years, Norm's book, I had the Boog Gentleman Flash book. Um, I had an old, uh, some, some, some 
uh, I think they were like photocopies or something that my friend got off the internet of like uh, some bits from old Jack Rudy's old stuff. Okay, and, yeah. You know, going back into the fine line. Yeah, yeah, like going into those OG kind of guys of that style. And it it was an, it was like another little fire that lit inside me. I was like, okay, maybe I don't want to do this new school mm. stuff. I, like, I'm obsessed with this lettering. And, I, and I, like I said, I found it therapeutic. The more I was kind of working with words and letters and scripts and that kind of style... I felt like I was, in a way, almost teaching myself reading and writing again, you know, re- like like doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I don't know, it, 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 it ignited another drive in me. No, it's not. Nice. For the next little step in, I'd only been towing maybe a year and I was like, right, okay, let me, I'm going to go a different route to this. And then with the more lettering that I was doing, yeah. the more black and grey work come in the door and then the colour started to kind of, push back yeah and then you, you know? end up just yeah well, mate, I used to honestly, hate doing black and grey work yeah and script used to used to drive me insane <laughs> but now you can do them in kind of yeah yeah and they go amazing. great together they always go hand in hand mm. but it was yeah it was it was a big passion that I found of mine that just got hold of me more than any other style in tattoo and I, I've got a massive love for Japanese work and I've also got a massive love for traditional mm. but lettering man it's just I don't know. It's, I could do it all day long. I could, you know, I could sit there and not get, never get bored of it. I could do lettering every single day and never do another black and grey piece again, and I would be so content. Yeah, one hundred percent. Just a quick one about podcast sponsor Ghost Cartridges. This is their Hex cartridge, which is the third generation and best selling in the range. Unique green, but also the finger comfort grip. The first to be introduced in the UK. That's something that's just really good for any artist to. If you're like me, hold your machine quite low on the grip. So you can also see the needle group and number engraved on the cartridge body. So when that needle's on, on your station, you can quite easily pick up which one without having to go through and look and it saves time. What I just love about that style is that it almost becomes a piece of art within itself. You know, like some of this it stuff is, is almost is, words, is illegible. Yeah. Some of it is almost to your, to like you can look at that and almost struggle to read it sometimes yeah. if you don't know what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, you but can. But in it, as one whole thing, it's a piece as well. So it's like two things in one. Yeah, that's what I really and I can really appreciate. And you've obviously smashing it with your with oh, your thank stuff, you, man. looking at especially where you're getting your inspiration from. Yeah. Um, Tom, I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about like, you're obviously, you're a keen biker and I know that you've done a bit of BMX and stuff. I'd say that. What, <laughs> um, you know, looking at, looking yeah. around the yeah, studio, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, what kind of, what came first? The tattooing or the biking? And like, were you kind of self-taught? Did you have a traditional, I presume it was a traditional No, yeah, I had a um, pretty traditional, yeah, like uh, upbringing in tattooing. Um, I mean, other than the sense of like, I didn't actually go after it. Like I was, I was really lucky in the sense that, um, the guy that actually taught me, uh, how to tattoo, Bert Thomas, shout out to you. Um, he, uh, he, he, he was the guy that done my first tattoos. And, um, at the time, like it wasn't even on my radar to do tattoos. Like I I was pretty content. I was doing graphic design at the time Mm. and, um, but like I didn't, I was young, I was only 18 and I didn't have like a, you know, a carved out route and what I was doing. Yeah. And then, yeah, as, well, as, as I started getting towed by him and then I guess he sort of saw my, you know, design work or whatever that I was doing for graphics. And then, yeah, I guess he sort of saw something in me or whatever, he, you know, he saw our potential. Mm. And then, you know, more he towed me, we sort of become friends and then kind of just, I don't know, it just naturally happened, you know, one day he sort of, offered to teach me how to tattoo and uh like i said i didn't even though i was like pretty into the graphics i wasn't like oh this is what i'm doing yeah i didn't, you know i was young i didn't know what i was doing you know and i was a bmxer so you know i'd been bmxer for years before that so it was quite kind of like a bit like what you were saying earlier like i had that sort of like misfit sort of mm. vibe about yeah, you me don't know I did, fit yeah in. i did I, I was like yeah where, where do i fit in you know and then you know bert comes along into my life and just sort of, yeah, he offered to teach me how to tow and I got on well with him and like all the people hanging out at the shop, like it just felt like a fit in, you know? And yeah. I, was, I was like, yeah, no, I'm going to do this, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so then I became the apprentice and yeah, it sort of went from there, you know? But yeah, it's mad, mad the timings of stuff, no. like how all of that stuff happens. And I think like, I was actually having a chat with Alex about this. It's like some things are, you're meant for, I believe anyway, and others yeah. you're not. And like, um, yeah, I'm definitely a, 
I'm, I think I'm quite spiritual. We'll have a chat. Yeah. About this. We'll <laughs> do have a chat about this. Yeah. I don't know where you, where don't, you guys are, but I don't. I don't, be- I don't believe in the cliche of everything happens for a reason. I'm not. Uh, I'm not like that. Like I don't think like my path into tattooing was set out for me or anything like that. Right. But I do think that um, you know that opportunity was there and. I'm the kind of person that just go, goes with the opportunity. There's a lot of people that, you know, I don't know, opportunities come to them and they, you know, I don't know, for whatever reason, they're like yeah, too scared like to later. jump or whatever. Or, yeah. you know, um, for me, I'm quite, I, I love to just go for things. Mm. Like, not all the time, but if I do go for something, I'm going for it. You know, I, ha- I have to yeah, go. You're all or I, I, yeah, I am all or nothing. Yeah, yeah, I've got same. a very addictive personality, um, yeah. you know. But as you know that from, from my drinking, like, I, don't, oh, I don't drink anymore. But um, but yeah, like I've got a very addictive personality, and and that does translate into that. It's kind of like you know you end up becoming uh, very obsessed with stuff, and yeah. you know you, you like we were saying earlier, you become your own worst critic, and um, yeah. all these things come from that addictive personality. Yeah, right? it's but, like a blessing and a curse. Isn't yeah, it? Like, for sure. I've got I've got obviously got something. I don't know what it is, but like yeah, I'm kind of. I'm just very focused on. Oh, me too. I'm autistic. The next thing, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to. I might, that one. <laughs> I might have to go in and have a have, have a check. But like, I, I don't know, man. We'll talk about like the me- like the importance of mental health, you know, within tattooing and like how important it is to just be like. Man, um, tattooing can ruin your mental health. Mm. Yeah, because it's so. I always say it to people: it's not a job; it's mm. a fucking lifestyle. Mm. And as cringy or cliche as it sounds, that's true. It's twenty four seven. Yeah. You know, you're, like we say, you, it's something that you feel like you're a part of. It's embedded in you. It's kind of like it gets a hold of you deeply, so passionately. Um, well, for most of us, for, for 90% of the, the, the good artists that we have in the industry, you know, mm-hmm. that are passionate about it. Yeah. Um, it's, you it live just, it and gets breathe a hold of it. Yeah, it you do. Hold, you live, yeah, breathe, shit and sleep there. That's, that's what you do yeah. to want to get anywhere with it. And it's not about... It's, we're not just in it oh because we want to make a name yeah it's, it's amazing that people recognise my work and Tom's work and, and yourself and it, everyone that's that's got that passion and that's driving it for the right reasons mm. you will get recognised but you're getting recognised for the right reasons you're not just you know just doing it because it's cool or it's fashionable or it's you know you want a s- status you want a certain profile like yeah. it's not what it was about at all yeah I know it, and it's a shame to see that but I guess you know just as well as I do that that won't last and it would it would I always, think things would come around full circle it's kind of peaking a little bit at the moment in that kind of stuff and that's like we were saying there's a whole nother that's a whole nother rant that we can we, do on that yeah but. there's like there is a real emergence of it's, it's social media that's doing it because yeah. obviously there's more and it's like there's a lot of positives like coming from just information that's readily available yeah, yeah. Uh, people that are kind of doing tutorials and stuff on YouTube yeah um, look up Mike Stockings and how much he contributes to like helping people with the pro Mike game. is yeah. Mike is smashing it. I mean I worked with Mike for like four years and he's a massive inspiration to me with mm. his work ethic and everything and he's very much like us he, once he gets his head into something he's obsessed with it but he will study that shit to the top and bottom yeah. like so he knows everything mm. he's not just I want to do this I want to be an expert at that but it's not and it's not just doing that for own, for your own personal gain to be like I'm going to be the best it's no, like, no, no, no. as soon as I know that I'm then going to start because, passing on yeah, to it's, everyone it's else. true passion yeah and he's giving back he was actually talking we were talking not that long ago um, about two weeks ago three weeks ago something like that about he's going to kind of help me try and get onto this Patreon stuff because I want to do a bit more tutorials with my lettering yeah it's not I don't want to be one of these people yeah, that please just man because I, I want to I want to yeah. do learn a little bit more about doing yeah, all that yeah. stuff well, I've done a do seminar it. and that was quite cool um, it was good but there was it wasn't enough time and I kind of I like going at my own pace with stuff um, it was a little bit daunting I get anxious about stuff I suffer with anxiety myself and I have my little my little mental health moments as we all end up having. But um, Mike was really kind of like informative with me recently about like how well Patreon can help you and it can help others. It's more accessible mm. for people to kind of, you know, pick up your, your tips and pointers and your, your, your passion and your inspiration that you want to give back. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I don't want to be t- teaching people to tattoo on the internet because I think it's completely wrong. Yeah. And a lot of, you see a lot of this now on YouTube and stuff and I, I'm massively, I, I don't like it. I don't think it's, 
I just don't think it's the right way to do it. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I literally had this this conversation as well in the last episode, kind of like, um, what are your thoughts yet on these kind of new ways of people learning this, you know, like tattoo schools, you know, like what's that about? It's fucking bullshit. You need, you need that (laughs) student. Plain and sorry, but it's true. Uh, Yeah, no, I I can't stand it. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> it's I don't true. I agree, bro. Right? I don't, I don't, agree. Even, I don't even it, it I don't even the know shit how out of me. they're allowed to be a thing. Like it, it needs to be regulated more. Mm. It's as simple as that. I think it needs to be regulated more. So how does that how does that happen? Because then <laughs> some sort of gov what there's like a governing body within yeah, tattooing, that, <laughs> and then that then has its own issues. Do you, know, do you know what the thing is? It's like back in the day, not that I, not that I think this is the way, but back in the day this would never have happened because the the guys that used to run the tattoo shop they're all so old. Pulling up on the mate, door, exactly. They're all so old school. If you if you set up a, a tattoo school like you know back like, but even before I started tattooing, you know like. Like, yeah, I've, I've been in the game 15 years. 15 years, but even if you say 20, 25 years, right? If you set up a tattoo school then, they turn up the next day you opened and they'd fucking Brick break it. your hands. Yeah, they, yeah. they would. The like, British, I'm not British saying that's and, right. Yeah. It's not. No, but, but you would have people turning up at your, your gaff and they'd probably oh, smash the shit out of mate, you sure and your shop. Would, and you would sure. not be open now, the next day. Yeah, 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 100. And then it'd affect your business and you'd give up. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you can still see the remnants of it in certain cities. I'm noticing this with travelling around, you know. Mm. But like, there's, it's crazy. There's some shops are like super like inclusive of each other. I just think that there to be that, yeah. there needs to be that respect for it still. Well, yeah. You, yeah, but that's like you were saying earlier. Because it is so accessible now, it's bringing in all sorts of different people. You know, like for instance, like when I first started tattooing, it was like I said, very much like people like myself that felt like misfits yeah. and like all these like kind of you know, I was a BMXer. It was like kind of that sort of vibe, you know, mm. like. It was still underground. It yeah, exactly. Underground. Yeah, yeah, it's underground. Forever, yeah. But now it is like you getting, not that I think it's wrong, but it's just you're getting all these different people. Like, do you know what I mean? You're getting like all different walks of life. You know? yeah. it's, it's like this it's, giant it's hipster movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. It's, 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 of people that just want to right do it way, because, it? yeah, and... You know, I don't care if I offend people by saying it, but it is. It's, it's what it is. It's, it's people are just jumping on a fucking bandwagon yeah. because they see price tags and they see money and they yeah. think that they can, you know, oh, I've done two weeks at a tattoo school and he printed me off a certificate. That's bullshit. Yeah. No. I know. It, it's You're not it's, learning anything in two weeks. You no. ain't even going to learn to mop the floor yeah, properly that. in two and weeks. And to be fair, any self-respecting studio would tell them to fuck off well, yeah. Yeah, with a certificate. You know what, what are you going to tell yeah. them? I've had it before. I've, I've had, had it. Yeah. Mate, I literally had someone message me the other day asking me if I would take them on and that they had uh, done like a, a course or something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they were like, I really want to learn more. I'm thinking, well, yeah, of course you want to learn more because you've learned nothing. You have, you well, you know all you've learned is to how, <laughs> how to hold a tattoo machine properly. Yeah. I don't know what they teach them there, but... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not, it, you know, you can guarantee it, it's, it's, it's horrendous. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think there should be there should be more education on the healthcare side of things. I mean, I'm like ex NHS, so like I'm go- I'm good that I know all of that. Got stuff. that knowledge. Um, do you know what I mean? Just to try and like whittle out all of the scratches and stuff. I think it needs some sort of like regulation, sort of re- like recognition for the artists that have put the graft in. It does. You know what I mean? And then that like, but. Who is the person to initiate that? I haven't got a clue. No, I don't. Know. I don't, like, I don't think it ever will be initiated properly because, as bad as I think, you know this new wave of you know young hipster tattooers just yeah. putting outlines on people. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> putting outlines on Fuck people. I love it. Yeah, no, it's yeah. just like you're printing something off of Google, you've traced the outline because you don't know how to shade or do anything else. Yeah. And it's as simple as that. Yeah. That's as blunt and as harsh as it is. That's the, that's the reality. And they're charging people through the fucking nose for it. Mm. You know, they're tattooing someone for 10 minutes. They probably even haven't put the lines in properly and they're walking them out the door and they go, yeah, that's 300 quid. Mm. No. Mm. It's just wrong. Yeah. You know? If you're enjoying the podcast this week, don't forget to leave us a rating and a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. It really helps the podcast grow. I could go on forever. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> trust me. Otherwise, I'm this, going, yeah. otherwise, this is going to be like an hour of me. <laughs> yeah. So there's no... There's, um, I said to you earlier, I was like, like wait, if it you, goes that way, I know I'm going to go off on it. Oh, yeah, I'll start pinching you. Yeah. Uh, no, do you know what? We actually got a bit of it out of our system earlier. Yeah, but it no, just, we just because we knew that. It was going, it's coming. <laughs> we, we, we was like, let's go out for food first and just have a little rant to ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Get out of it. Because it's boiling in me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, man, I love it. it but yeah. it... it 
I don't listen. I'm all for people that want to come into the industry, and for it to be, there's certain there is aspects of tattooing being mainstream because it, it brings us more money. Yeah, that's great. You know, people want to be successful, but it's not just about the money, and it's not just about you know, oh, I've got a cool status because I'm a tattooer. Mm. You know, like. It, it even annoys like, me when clients are like, oh, yeah, uh, my friend done this hand poke for me. It's like, right. hand poking isn't some thing that someone just does, you know, it's just like that anyone can do. Like serious hand poke, traditional hand poking come from, mm. you know, a real far back history of culture of tattooing. Yeah, it feel, it's like a, it can feel like a mockery, can't it? It 100%. is, and it's the same thing with these fine line. It's like, it's if you're going to do a certain style of tattooing, mm. do it properly. Yeah, you know? research it. Your work yourself is, you've got a lot of fine line influence in it and you put your, your tattoos are solid. They're saturated right. The lines are put in right. Oh, you know, mate, I, no, you. But it's true. And I was saying to you earlier, I checked out your stuff. It, it's, it, you're doing it and you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. But there's people and there's a lot of people in the industry that are putting this style out, this so-called fine line style out and it's not fine line. It's just outline. Mm. It's just a cheap way to they're, they're working one of the lower end conventions, they're turning up, they're putting a flash sheet out of shit that they've just printed off of Google and it's just all outlines and they're charging 200 pound pop, 300 pound pop for it. But it's cool mm. because that's the style that people are looking for, especially young kids these days, students or anyone from the age of, you know, 18 to mid twenties. It's cool to just have this, it's almost like, it's like a stick, I think. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a, a, a new version of how traditional toes were placed, you know, mm. this this flashwork kind of sticker effect of, yeah. you know, piece, piece, piece. But now it's like people are okay with having shit stuff put on them, like just crappy designs, Yeah, you know, just, just plastered on them. I mean, I haven't got many good toes apart from the ones that my good friends have been doing on me, you know, the past maybe five plus years where I've yeah. actually been thinking about my toes. Um, when I was younger, I, was yeah, just, I just wanted to get tattooed all the time so in my apprenticeship. Matt, are, yeah. you, are you a real tattoo artist if you haven't got a load of shit on you though? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, I, my, my, I think it's weird when I meet another tattoo artist and they've got all good stuff on them. Yeah, like, yeah. There's something not right here. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. can't put my finger on it. Yeah. 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 No, you it's me, it's so lot. true. Yeah, I mean, like, my left legs are right off. That's like me... Oh, yeah, I've got two yeah, back yeah, arms now. Do you know like, what I mean? <laughs> and I like apprentices and stuff. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah previous get time. You got to have yeah. you got to have some stuff you've done on yourself as well. Yeah. That's a classic. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, I think that's that's part of uh, part of the initiation, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. like, it is, and and it teaches you to experience what your clients are going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Oh my god, yeah, you've got to have empathy. I mean, there's another fucking like, can you be a tattoo artist without any tattoos? I don't know. Like, mm. did you? No, there's a, there's, there is some tattooers that I've met over the years, you know, that aren't heavily tattooed and they've only got a few in, you know, some they ain't even on show, but, and they put out amazing work and, 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 and they are super passionate, but they're just taking their time with the tattoos. But there is a lot in that same kind of little group that I was just Rocket, ranting about yeah. that are like, they've got one or two tattoos that's like, fuck all, it's some little hand poke style or some fine line style that's just scribbled on them by their friend. And it's like, okay, I'm, I'm, a ta I'm a tower now. So let me ask you both. Um, if you could give someone listening to this who's like, I mean, I know some of my clients, uh, not clients, sorry, some of some of the listeners like yeah. are, are kind of listening to the podcast for educational purposes, for like getting yeah. into the industry. Yeah. It What like one thing should they be doing if they want to become a proper tattoo artist nowadays? I think be open to learning multiple styles mm. build your fundamentals build your foundation like me and Tom when we, we was coming up like we spoke about it multiple times and like I said earlier you do whatever comes in the door mm. like the yeah. shop I started at was a shit shop and you know I won't name no names but I didn't learn a lot from the guy that was telling me mm. I found out not that far into my apprenticeship that you know he told us that he'd been tattooing for so many years and he'd only been tattooing a year and a half you know, oh, shit. and he he cut his apprenticeship short. And this is one of the times you're 15. No, 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 no. That was just some random. No, no, no. I started. Yeah, no, 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 no. I started. Cowboy or what? I, started <laughs> I started my apprenticeship when I was. Uh, I must have been. Twenty nineteen twenty something like that. Yeah. Um, but 
it, I didn't I didn't learn much. If anything, he, what he taught me was not to do on people. Like, I remember he gave me the first one of the first machines that I started using was like one of these old rotary machines that you know with like the the, the shimmer metallic wrap round of it. He used to buy that at the back of like Skin Deep magazine or something like that. And he was like, oh, yeah, just crank it up to like twelve volts and just let them have it. <laughs> that was his yeah. way of telling me to pack a lot, a lot of people do that now. They yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. But it Sounds was like, like and I'm going like, oh, everyone keeps coming back and they're scarred up. And they're chewed up to fuck, like, yeah. Why it because it was wrong, you know. And it wasn't until I left that shop, and I was like, no, I want to pursue this. Like, even whilst I was trying to get my apprenticeship, I'd done the whole, nearly did the whole scratcher thing of, yeah, I'm gonna, Try I'm just gonna buy a, buy a machine off of eBay, and I'm gonna learn tattooing. And I'd done that for a very short period. I tattooed a few of my friends in my bedroom at my mum's house, like a dickhead. And I thought, oh yeah, man, yeah, this is this is, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I didn't know fuck all. I didn't know what I was doing. Mm. And I recognized it. I stopped it. I hung around the shop and I went in full passion. So I have seen that other side of it and I know how much it's, how tempting it is. So, mm. so, so the, so the advice there is to just like seek out the knowledge and take do it your properly. time with yeah. it. Do it properly. Go on, don't just go into any shop either. You know, do your research. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to experience tattooing, for 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 the real reasons and for like the passionate reasons and you know learn the history of it the culture of it the the, the true inspiration and the people that that, that paved the way for us mm. you know if you want and, and and like I said earlier knowledge is power and I think that you should know that stuff bef when you get in when you get into especially a, a, an industry like this you should you should do that because. You're, you're you're giving back to the people that did pave the way mm. and you're setting yourself up not for failure and you're not going to make... I made so many mistakes. Mm. I've, like, I've been telling for 13 years. I've probably only been happy with my work the past six years. Mm. You know? Yeah. And it's... You're, you're you, always you don't stop. No, you're, you're always learning. No, so if you can get if you can get those good habits in at the start and, and get into a good studio and be... Be surrounded by artists that are, are are so passionate and they have the same passion and hunger and drive as you. Mm. You you've got, you're not going to lose. Yeah, of course. you know, and you're not going to be put into certain brackets and pigeonholes. Like I'll be honest, I'm guilty of putting people into certain brackets and shit because sometimes I see shit online and I think, oh, you're just another one of these fuckers that's just jumped on the bandwagon. Mm. You know. Yeah, you know, it sounds horrible, but it's the truth. I don't hold back with a lot of shit these days. I've, I've, I've had a lot of life experiences that have recently that have opened up my eyes to a lot of bullshit, and mm. I kind of I'm very cutthroat with stuff. Yeah, but no, it's a good way to be. I'm probably like I that just, well, I, so. honesty, man. That's yeah. like one of the main things in life is honesty. And and if people want to get into the tattoo industry, you honest, be honest with yourself. Don't half ass it. Yeah, like like Tom says, you know, it's like he was obsessed with it. Right, that's it. This is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go for it mm. all out. Yeah. You know, the, all yeah. or nothing. The, the problem with that is, is obviously people do get like that. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. But it's like then, you know, it's quite a common thing. People like want to run before they can walk. Yeah. And then, you know, I've had I have people message me all the time being like, oh, yeah, like I've uh, I've started tattooing. I've got like a machine and I've got some fake skin. And uh, will you take someone on? It's like, well, no, I wouldn't take you on now because you've already learned a shitload of bad habits. Yeah. By by jumping all them steps, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, I pff, maybe I'm a little bit out of touch. Like I got taught, you know, a long time ago, and I don't really know. You know, maybe people teach people different these days. But like for me, I think there's enough there's enough information out there for there to be a general consensus on like yeah, the kind of the, the right way to go about it. Yeah. yeah, but I just think like for me, it's like. I, I don't think you should be touching the tattoo machine for a, a while, you know? Like, mm. you, you need to learn the basics first, you know, as horrible as the term as it is, but you need to be, like, the shop bitch, you know? Mm. You, you need to just, like, do the cleaning, like, learn how, all the, you know, yeah, the just, cleaning just stuff works. Stuff like you know, that. make There's teas, so much like, that. <laughs> and just watch and just learn what yeah. you can learn without even touching the tattoo machine. And then, when you know, then when whoever's teaching you goes, right, you're going to, Try it. We're, we're, I never touch fake skin, but I know that's quite common these days. Yeah. If they go, right, now here's a tattoo machine, here's some fake skin, then that's when you tattoo. Mm. Yeah. No, don't take it upon yourself. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I definitely, I get my apprentices to use fake skin, but that's only because it's infinitely better than like 
an orange or a banana that, oh, yeah, I, yeah, that yeah. I was doing it on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, it's it's never pigskin, you know. No, so, mate, I, I remember taking a chicken out of my mum's fridge and I towed <laughs> it and I wrapped it up and put it back. <laughs> That's what, what I was trying to do. On it? Oh, I can't even remember. Yeah. I just ended up feeding it to the dogs in the end of it. Do not day. eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but any, anything that I thought, right, okay, this, and I mean, that was terrible because <laughs> poultry skin just was just tears as soon as you put a line for it. <laughs> no, nah, man, I, I mean, I was like, uh, I guess my apprenticeship was like very old school in the fact of he was like, yeah, your first tattoo is going to be on... Well, actually, no. My first tattoo wasn't on myself. <laughs> this is a funny story, actually. My first <laughs> tattoo was actually on my old boss, like the guy that taught me. And uh, we was absolutely drunk as skunks. Right? <laughs> and I literally went out one night, absolutely blake, like just, you know, mess. Yeah. And then uh, he had a good idea. He's like, oh, let's go back to the shop. And, uh, yeah. and then we went back to the shop and the next thing I know he's like set up a tattoo machine he's like right you're going to do your first tattoo on me I'm like <laughs> are you are you joking I can't even see straight man like he's like yeah go on like we, like he was a big drink at the time he doesn't drink anymore either but um, yeah anyway I've done my first tattoo I couldn't even remember doing it you know like I woke up the next day and like and then you know I'm like fuck did I tattoo but did I tell you about that? Like, yeah, you and then the it, next yeah. time I come into the shop, like, you know, for work, and he's like, do you remember doing that? I'm like, <laughs> no. It was, oh, it was awful, man. You know? was it? But anyways, yeah, that was my first one. But then, like, I feel like that's kind of a, quite an old school thing, you know, like just it's jumping like a little right the deep end in well, that mate, or tattooing like, yourself, you know? Yeah, like, I tattooed a, I remember it, like three colour lotus, um, not lotus, sorry, cherry blossom. But oh, like, right, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was like, yeah, trad packing in colour. It was all on my first tattoo and I hadn't packed on like even on fruit or anything. Yeah. And my mentor just let me have a crack on the shin and <laughs> it actually came out okay yeah, to be fair. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, smashing it in like a, like a Mickey Sharps and it was, I don't know, man, it was, um, yeah, it's 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 a good way to it's a good way to kind of just test the waters. You've just got to get in at the deep end, but after you've put that background, oh yeah, for sure, yeah. The other thing I think as well is that with that is um, it, like you say, it sort of uh, it lets you know whether it's actually for you in a way because you know it is it is a bit of a weird thing tattooing people. Let's face it, you know, like you're mm. actually inflicting pain on another person, and it's not for everyone. Like I, I've heard of loads of people thinking they want to be a tattoo artist, and then when they actually come to tattoo someone, they're like, oh, no, it's weird, you know, like, or whatever. Yeah. They're like weird out by the blood or whatever, you know. But yeah. so I guess in a way that old school mentality of just going straight for the, the jugular or such yeah. and going for real skin, it's kind of like, you know, it lets you know straight away. Yeah. Am I am I cool with this? I'm actually I'm actually stabbing someone. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, because you don't contact. get that with fake skin. You no, know, you've like, got to realise what you're doing. Yeah, man. You have got to realise what you're doing. I, I always think that. I think this is weird. Like sometimes when I'm tattooing, like <laughs> in the day, I'm just tattooing my customer, and I'm like. My job's really weird. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm the causing same, pain on yeah. someone. Yeah. I'm making them bleed, and and they're paying me. For this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and I find like, oh, I'm sorry, mate. I'm sorry, mate. Like, yeah. Why is yeah. Sorry? Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I just feel bad. No, even easy. And like you know, especially at the end of like an eight-hour session or whatever, you put yeah. white in, and they're oh, just like, oh uh, yeah. They're, they're, I mean, yeah. I'm not doing this big scale, big scale stuff. I, I guess I kind of really. That's a good way to kind of lead on to your collaboration mm. and your working relationship. Yeah. Um, you're you're doing these massive like full like legs and stuff at conventions. Mm. Um, like how do you how are the clients sitting for that for, for that stuff? Well, no, we was lucky. With yeah, that to be fair, like that that full out a leg we done. Yeah, we were super lucky. Like the guy. Bearing in mind the guy that turned up to it, it was his right. He, he only had one. Tattoo. Yeah, he had one of a tattoo, Fuck right? It. And we, we, I did, stupidly, you know, if someone contacts you and goes, "I want to get a massive collab piece by you two, you just assume that you know, I thought, oh, he's probably got two yeah. sleeves. I don't know, maybe a chest or a back. He knows the drill. He turned up. I swear to God, I couldn't see a tattoo. I'm like. Uh, <laughs> me and him are both like, shitting you ourselves tattoos, like, mate? and he goes yeah yeah showed me this toe on the back of his neck I swear to God it was that well. big I was like oh my God I d this was the day of the convention 
Yeah, and they I was not like, got him to send the photo or the day unma- one. The day one. I just no, didn't ask. Just I just assumed. For it. And, oh, and okay. like the photo he sent, he, yeah, I couldn't see any tattoos on his legs, but he had a hoodie on. So I just thought, ah, oh, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, anyway, first day of the convention shows up. He's like, oh, yeah, no, I've only got that. I'm like, oh. I went into him. I, I went into him and I go, dude, this is bad. I'm like, he's, he's only got one little toe. He's like, he's like, you're joking. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, hey. and you're like in the convention, like yeah, we're, there, we're set up, yeah, we're yeah, ready to go. It's like, yeah, what? How? What we're talking like? 15 minutes before everyone. Yeah, comes literally in. before yeah. everyone comes Honestly. in. Yeah. And then yeah, so Me. then we were like, well, we're just gonna have to see what happens. And anyway, I, I spoke to him and I'm like, um, I spoke to our customer and I said. Like, dude, you know you're in for this, right? Like, it's, this ain't going to be easy. Like, we're both tattooing you all day, and then tomorrow you're coming back again. That's right? in at the deep end. Mate, and what did we do? Was it eight hours the first eight day? Eight hours the six. first day, six a yeah. second. And so, how did he sit? But, um, man, like, I'll take my out to him. He sat like a fucking trooper. <laughs> no, <laughs> no pain meds, no numbing cream, Mate, none of that. The first one day one the he done... Com- uh, yeah. customers I've ever had. Yeah, he really? just sat like a rock. <laughs> I mean, he was like this, you know, for most but of he it. he firmed but it. He just firmed it. And, and it was like, I think because it, I said to him at one point, because he was nervous, and I, I said... The thing is, you might have an upper hand because because you haven't been tattooed heavily. He's got nothing to compare. You don't to. know. <laughs> yeah. So you just whatever it is, it is. He was You've got the, to deal with his it. body probably get. He had so much adrenaline probably that he, man. He was hyped up for it. He was yeah. hyped up for it, and then and he, he smashed it. And then the second day, his friend just started feeding him some whiskey, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> now is this is this the one that you want? Because I was in Bright, I was at Brighton twenty two maybe yeah. you won the award there yeah that was, yeah, the one. that was the one that then. was that yeah. one yeah, yeah. yeah so we've only done it. the one collab um we, we spoke about it for, for fucking ages, didn't uh, we? We, yeah. spoke we, about we, it we wanted for, to for do it for ages and then um and then, for a yeah, good few years the, we were uh, saying pandemic it. and that oh yeah, that kind of put a stop to it. Then we we did obviously do some like collab like artwork stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um but then yeah, that that one at Brighton was like the yeah, the first one really. And then now obviously we're doing it again at Brighton this year. Um but, yeah. yeah, so where are you where are you up to with that? We were talking a little bit before we started recording. Like, so we were talking about it this morning, weren't we? How do you, well, how do you prepare? How are you going to go and like prepare for this? Like, I mean, well, at the minute, obviously, it's early days. We literally only just posted it the other day. So um, we just, you know, first of all, we have to get a, a punter, you know. I'm not I'm not being funny. Like, we, we're not like the, <laughs> the most famous tattoo artists in the world. So it's not like, you know, someone who's super mega famous, yeah. they can post it up and they'll probably get someone like that. Yeah, but for multiple us, people straight yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. They're going to have people to pick from. We do get people, like a few people interested, but it's kind of like working out who's actually going to, one, be able to see it, you know, two, they might have this, a horrendous idea oh well we can't do that you know yeah. you, well we've got no space yeah all that yeah, yeah you know you, there's space. a lot of factors that need to all align which and you know i'm not being funny you're not going to get well us like i say us we're not going to get like tons and tons of people inquiring about it because at the end of the day who really wants to get tattooed by two people for two days it's not yeah. it's not going to be fun is it you know so yeah. um so yeah it, with that, obviously, yeah, he There's minimizes. There's a sick bit of work on offer, though. Do you know what I mean? And uh, it's like, yeah, but that's what, but it's, then when you do get someone who who emails about it, they're really up for it because yeah. because they notice that they're like, oh, this is a cool opportunity. And then especially now we've done one before, they can look at that and go, the oh, fuck that you know they've walked in there and got that massive piece and and that is you know yeah. I think that's quite attractive you know because it's like I can walk out of there after a weekend of hell. And, uh, it is. Uh, it's not for the faint heart. Yeah. Like, you've got to have no, some no. serious like yeah. uh, mental I'll, I'll drive to do, to do that. No, I'll sit for about an hour now after I've numbed up. <laughs> <laughs> I go. I mean, I'm going home. You're really selling it. So you're yeah. right. <laughs> but you know, honesty again, mate. Yeah. Well, if you're listening, to be fair, this will probably be aired before. For Brighton, anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, if anyone's it, listening, yeah, that's the thing, yeah, man. That's like, it. There's plenty of people out there. Like I said, our last customer who was just nails. You know, there's plenty of people who can just handle it. Like I personally can't. I, I hate getting towed now. But you know, if you're that person that can handle it, I think it's a great thing. Like it's it's cool, isn't it? You know, you turn up at a tag convention. You you know, it's it. 
as, as cheesy as it is, it's you like, like a, part it's of the show more probably, yeah, don't you know? yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm not being funny. That guy that sat there, he loved it, didn't he? Because he yeah, was getting he all this attention all week. Yeah. You know, everyone kept coming up to him. They're like, man, our booth oh, was man, smarter I heard than about this Let me have a look at your leg. Yeah, yeah. let me look yeah. at your leg and like bigging and he won it up. The award. And yeah, and he won an award. So man, he was like, at the he end, was so hyped. He up. was like, oh my god, I'm so happy. He's like, I've got this award winning piece. He kept saying, I've earned it. I've earned it. Yeah, it's you know, it's, it's true. It's an accomplishment man. for them. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Oh, it is. Only yeah. souls. Yeah, it must. Yeah. It must make, like I'm not being funny. Like that must make you feel good about it as well, because it's like you know he, he had people like stopping him and like going, oh, can I check it out? You know, and stuff like that. And it's yeah. like I don't he know. He loved it, man. He was well happy. Yeah, with that. yeah. But that's what I mean. It's like an experience. You know, it's like. Yeah, you're getting a cool tattoo, but it's also you. You, you know, you're coming along for the the whole journey. Mm. Like, you know what I mean, Mate, that's, oh, I are. mean, that is like a, that's a memorable experience because yeah, you've got man. like a permanent Especially thing. Especially second tattoo as well. Oh yeah. man, yeah, he goes from having like a kanji yeah. piece that's like two centimeters by two centimeters yeah. squared, and then he goes right full outside of a leg. Yeah, <laughs> so two days what, straight. What is, what's the criteria? As your client for this convention, they've got to be completely open to your creative uh, freedom have um, you got a direction not, you want to go that. with it we, we've, no. we've said that um, you know we're open to suggestions as well mm. at the end of the day like it's not lost on us that you know yeah someone's uh, committing to a big area of skin you know I'm I'm not one of these like people that's so like pretentious to be like oh it has to be exactly my concept or whatever you know that just ain't me like yeah. Uh, yeah I like to have a lot of input because at the end of the day I want it to look as good as it's gonna be yeah um, it's a and fine, of it's course, a fine line isn't it? Uh, yeah you know but, and of course it's gotta fit in with mine and nipper style mm. which then that pigeonholes it into a certain you know thing there's only certain things that are going to work um but uh, having said that if they go you know for instance like with that last one we done we came up with that concept yeah um if he turned around and went oh no i don't well you know i don't like this or whatever then we could have we, you know we yeah, would have you gone, oh, well, we could, you try you know, and change it a little change bit it up a bit you know you, you, you can't be like no this is exactly how it's got to be like, i, I don't, don't understand it because there's a lot of towers that that are mm. so like maybe some higher end towers that are very specific about no you're having this and this is what i'm doing on you only and certain parts of the body yeah, yeah and there's tough, there's man. like you've got to find that balance like as much as i don't like probably 80% of clients' ideas that come in because it's just mm. not realistically doable mm. what they have in their head sometimes, you ha you're you putting something on them for the rest of their life. Do you know what the problem is as well? I think it's the social media because um, you are having to, like, feed the machine and you know that, like, certain... You know, and if you do inner forearms, it's going to be flat. It's going to, the skin's going to be really consistent. Yeah. And you want your pieces to always look a certain way. Oh, then yeah. you're going to feel this pressure. Yeah. Um, and then it's almost, yeah, then the, the what the customer wants goes out the window then at that point. You know what I mean? Because you're yeah, exactly. so driven about making it how you want it to look. Yeah. So, yeah, where do you draw that line? I like Are you, I mean, do you... Are you happy with, do you post, I mean, that's two separate things, but mm. do you post and are you happy with every single piece that you're producing? No, no way. No, I'm never happy no, with everything. I, I very rarely post these days. Yeah, I hardly post. Um, not not because I'm not happy with it, but I don't know. Just social media is a lot. It runs a the world these days, and we all know that, and we've got to conform to it. You know what I mean? We have got to kind of move with the times. I get that, but it's like I, years ago when I first jumped on Instagram, it was great. It was like right, I've got an online portfolio. I've got a I've got a, a platform. I've got an ad free advertising that I can use. Yeah, that's you it. know. And yeah, it it done wonders for, for tattooing. But I think these days now it's so like it's just trying to be like these TikTok and everything else that's kind of like that. To be honest, I feel like it's just it's just random jargon bullshit that's mm. being force fed and pumped into it, people. You know, shown to people's faces. It's like it's you can't use it for what you used to use it for. Now it, your posts don't get much many reaches. You've got to do a reel. Yeah. You've got to be a content creator now. Yeah. Or it's like, no, I want to show my tattoos. Yeah. You know? But yeah. now I have to go, I'm going to film me freehanding it. And don't get me wrong, I quite like doing that because it gives people a little insight into the process of what I do with my freehand work. Yeah. But then it's, I've got, I got, I've got, edit and make a, a, a short video oh, it's a lot it's it's like it's, a, it's you a lot could go work. on for eight for yeah. hours you about can. like because it's can. there's also like where would any of us be without it yeah yeah it's, it, it, listen it's, it's helped it, us it has mm. 
but it's 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 the catch twenty two. It's it's almost like you're starting to sell your soul a little bit. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, you really are. Yeah. The problem is as well is like it, it's, it's a snowball effect, isn't it? It's like you know maybe years ago when it first came out, it was like yeah, I would just post every tattoo I'd done, you know, like. But then it's like then you know what with people editing their photos and stuff, it's a little bit of that creeps in. Then yep. it's like oh well, I've got to edit my photo, mm. and then before you know it, like me, I'm like really picky now. If the photo doesn't look quite right, I'm like well, I'm not posting that because yeah. Yeah. because it's like the bar is set so, so high. high. But and also, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm completely song? happy with a tattoo. Yeah, well, actually, I won't say that. You're never completely happy with a tattoo. You'll always have nah. something. But I'm happy with a tattoo, and my customer loves it. That's all that matters to me. Yeah. But then I, I look at the picture, and I'm like, ah, you know, it might be something stupid. It might just be like, you know, when there's like a bit of blood, like it's just making it look like, you know, or whatever. There's a shiny spot, but you, you compare it to all these other like perfect photos on Instagram, and I'm like, nah, well, you know. But maybe, maybe that's just been like self critical. I don't know. Maybe you should just post it. But um, yeah, I mean, you, tough, but when you it? know, when if you know eyes are on you, you know, and like yeah. other art, you think oh, other artists are going to be picking that apart, yeah, and like the exactly. clients are going to be looking at that, thinking that shit. Yeah, but that, that, like, that comes off the back of the social media because you know how much more your work is going to be viewed mm-hmm. worldwide. Yeah, but so then it's, is that a positive because then that drives you it, to improve. It, it is a positive, mm. but it's also. It can be, it can have a negative effect, like we were saying earlier about mental, mental health. health. Yeah, completely. It, it installs this extra worry on you. It's like you start overthinking everything yeah. too much. Like mm-hmm. I, I'd post something and then I'd look at it and I'd zoom in and I'd be like, oh, is that line not perfect enough there? Or oh, is that shade out a bit here? Yeah. And, 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 but you can go down the rabbit hole with yeah. it. Yeah, so that's know? what I don't want to do. And that's another reason why I'm kind of doing the podcast is because like I want to be able to like authentically get out and just have a chat with other artists you know and yeah. not get like because speaking to you guys and everyone else has been on the show is quite reassuring because I know that a lot of us have kind of gone through similar experiences yeah. you know what I mean um, yeah I think I think it's great we've all there's, we've all faced quite unique challenges in tattooing um, let's maybe ask you that question and what what is the single biggest challenge that you've faced in your tattooing career or even having your studio mm. I don't know man it's I a guess, tough one I guess like well, it's been a lot of challenges for yeah, me. Yeah, of course. I mean, most like recent it would just be like simply the fact of like when I went alone, you know, like it's yeah, that is um, it's quite a, a scary thing to do. It's you a know? massive, it's a massive uh, risky take, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You know, am I right? Am I right in thinking? Correct me if I'm wrong. Were you? Was it Skin Yard? Skin Yard. Yeah, That's yeah, so where that, you were before. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and. I mean, so Skin Yard was actually where I originally learned how to tattoo years yeah, and years sure. ago. Um, but who I said earlier, he, he still owns it, it's still there. Um, so I learned how to tattoo there and then I went off and worked in another shop for a while. Then I actually ended up going back to him. Um, and then, yeah, that was the shop I was at before I come here. Mm. Um, but yeah, just like being around other artists, um, you know, for 10 years at that point, um, working in shops, and um yeah just making that jump to go solo you know it, mm. it was quite a daunting thing you know and it's i mean it's the same in any industry like anyone that chooses to go out on their own and start their own business or whatever but um i think in tattooing it's it, it, there is quite a lot of that sort of social aspect to it you know and and bouncing yeah. off of other artists yeah. and, and stuff. also because you never stop learning i think it's so important to be in a studio with other people yeah. now this is something that i would kind of i'm seeing a massive emergence in private studios now i'm not saying they're bad you've got a banging private yeah. studio here you've obviously put the hours in and to get to a point where you can survive on your own and you yeah. don't need to be around everyone constantly but like i feel like maybe there are some artists who are going out too soon um not necessarily opening their own studio but like going off on your own and i yeah, think yeah, well yeah. you know you, you kind of yeah you no, do agree, need to bounce man, off people yeah, like yeah, so uh, where is that where's that point maybe for you when did you say right now is the time i want to go and do it myself do you know the thing for me was like uh, yeah i was still learning and i still am today um but the one thing for me was like the shop that i was working at um previous to this um the guys that worked there they was all doing traditional stuff pretty much so in a way yeah i was still learning but it would be different if i was in a shop full of like realism artists 
then I would, that would probably have a bit more of a hook in me, you know, because then yeah. I would be like, oh yeah, I'm really like seeing all this shit. But I already for quite a while felt alone in that the creative sense because mm. it, yeah, you can draw stuff from other styles, and I did, you know, even just watching the way, you know, uh, guy that works in the shop, Phil Yarnell, um, just even watching the way he worked, he does traditional stuff, but just like the speed that he was tattooing and things like that, you know, j- just by watching that, it, yeah. it uh, I don't know, it made me want to tattoo faster, yeah. even though it wasn't the same style inspires, at all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You do get inspired by different people, but yeah, I don't know. So for me, that was like, I don't know, I felt like, oh, I could go alone because I already felt for quite a while I was having to, like, inspire myself quite a bit, you know? Yeah, so, um, But uh, having said that, I still do think now, even I've been in here for five years on my own, I do still think, oh, yeah, I probably could benefit from being around other people, like, but it's just, I don't know, it's a toss-up, in it? You know, it's mm. like, what do you want? Like, yeah. you know, it's, um, for me, this works now. Um, yeah. And, you know, like I said earlier, I do, I do do a lot of, like, family portraits things like that i feel like there's not um i don't need to obviously be as creative with that you know he's uh yeah at the end of the day i always say this to my customers i'm a glorified photocopy <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because i am you know i'm looking at a picture and i'm i'm copying it you know yeah black and gray work doesn't get like that i mean yeah. i want to change up my black and gray style a, a bit I, I think i feel like i want to put a little bit more like surrealism stuff or like a bit of oh, yeah. illustrative stuff in there maybe even a bit of like a graffiti aspect into it again and yeah. just chop oh, it man. up a little bit that you know? would be, that's quite a cool and you don't see that sort of combination yeah I, I mean even like I was talking to like, I work I've got my private studio I've been in there two years I waited ages to kind of do it I did want to do my own shop but I think the industry is so saturated with with shops that are just quick startups from this you know this this new wave movement of people just buying machines and starting up shops and it's um they've got no experience they haven't done their time in studio i'm i've probably worked in six maybe seven different shops yeah. in the past 13 years yeah and i've taken something from each shop whether it be negative or positive i've always learned things from that and when i get to a certain point in a studio sometimes i'm like okay right i need to move on now because i need to I need some new influence and it's nothing, it's not always like, I fell out of a few people in shops, yeah, and I've had to move on. Mm. Um, But there's also been times where I've had to move on through either, you know, life circumstances have changed. Yeah. And I need a fresh start or I need, but I I just, I just blatantly just need some new inspiration. Mm. You know, I've kind of learned what I could what I felt I could from the people that are there and the people that I'm surrounded by. And I'm like, right, I need some f- fresh stuff now, you know? Have you ever have you ever found yourself in a situation where, like, you've started to fall out of love with it? Yeah, loads. Um, I'll do it. I, and, 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 and more the past few years. I mean, I, I got my private studio. I was going for a massive life change. Um, and I needed some headspace for my mental health. I needed to just kind of get away from the area. I was moving house. I was having loads of changes going on in my life, um, kind of rebuilding myself a little bit. Mm. Um, and I was trying to tackle stuff a bit more head on, but in my own time and in my own way. Yeah. So I thought that that was the right time and the right step to then go, okay, now I can do my private studio. Mm. Because I've done time and I've done the experience. Like you said, you know what I mean? You, you, I, I've put in the graft. Mm-hmm. I've done that. And I still want to do that. Like I, I go. I was about to say I go and work one day a week in South Woodford at Fudu Shin. Yeah. Um, uh, the guy that owns it, Steve, uh, Steve Moreno. He's been a massive influence to me. Like he's probably one of the uh, top people in the industry that, or even just in life in general, that I actually completely one hundred percent take in what they say. Mm. You know. Yeah. Like I take it. I take in what they say and I use it. And I try and apply it. And I only go there one day a week. And I've had people go to me like, oh, why are you going to a shop when you've got your own studio? Mm. Why are you paying a chair rent again? Why are you doing this? Why are you, you yeah, know, because giving it, a percentage? It's more than money. It humbles me. Yeah. It brings me back down to earth. It takes away any bit of ego or even the opposite, like laziness. It, 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 it inspires me again mm. to be around, like the artist, that he's got such a strong team there. So there's there's like we said you never you're never not learning mm. and every wednesday i'm either learning or i'm having a good laugh with people where i feel like it's like you know a home from home um and and i don't even book my own work in there i let them book my work in so 
I will go there and I could be going back to do, I do walk-ins there, mm. you know? Yeah. Like my clients go, oh, I can't get in with you for three months, four months, five months, whatever, you know, however busy it gets. And they say, oh, but can I come, I can I can get in with you quicker at Foodish Inn. Mm. Yeah, you can, but you have to go through the studio. So I let them do my bookings for me because I'm, I'm going there to... Well, you're going, no, you're going there probably for yourself, aren't you? you know, man, like, it, yeah. it, it humbles me. It splits up my week. It, it brings me back down to earth. It gives me that inspiration again, the drive again, the passion. You know, I'm surrounded by people, everyone in there, even if they haven't got anything in and, and it's their day off, they'll come in and, and, and just sit there at their station and be oh, drawing cool. and they'll be amongst it. And it's... Yeah. Yeah. I just want to be there. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It, it, man, I'm sold. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to... No, yeah. it does. It gives you that drive it, again. It, it, it does right, give you yeah, the moment to take me on. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, it gives you that drive again. It really yeah, does. Yeah. Bro, that's oh, what it's sure, about. Man. And I've got to do, I've got to do more, com- not com- more guest spots. Even I, I, guest know, spot, studio, man. I still want to do guest spots. Guest spot is like, such a good thing. Yeah, to be around other artists, I want to do more seminars. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm doing three conventions this year. I want to just try and yeah, I've Just already booked involved. up five for this year. I said I weren't going to do any this year and I've done five already. I'm like, yeah. okay. Because it's important. It's very easy to get carried away with yeah. that and like it, it does consume you. Don't forget to head over to Instagram and drop me a message. Let me know who you want to hear from in the next episode. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about like what you guys do outside the tattooing. Um, like I know you obviously are, you're a keen biker. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about your um, the cycling tattooist. <laughs> um, I mean, fifteen and a half k subscribers on YouTube. What was the and where did, I guess where does that interest come from and, and how did you decide to kind of do that thing on YouTube? Um, Which is cool, by the way. I like yeah, it. thanks, man. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I didn't. Yeah, it, it was never planned for sure. It just sort of. Uh, um, in all honesty, it just came off the back of like the pandemic, man. You know, it's mm. like, um, you know, one of the first things they they let us do, were, you know, when they first started going, you're allowed out now. <laughs> uh, they let us out. <laughs> you can leave your house. Yeah, yeah, they finally, were, yeah. yeah, they was like, uh, you can go ride a bike. That was one of the things. It's it was very like, kind of them, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. But so like... Um, yeah, that, so I did, I, you know, I've, I've always ridden bikes my whole life since I was, you know, I got my first BMX when I was like 10, you know, and I fell in love with riding anything with two wheels, you know? Um, but then, yeah, so I had a, I had a road bike and I just started going out on it, you know? Mm. And, and, uh, again, like I said earlier, I've got an addictive personality. So it just sort of slowly started consuming me, you know, it was just like, I was going out every day and I, like, first of all, I'd go out for 20 miles then the next, you know, next week I was doing 50 miles. Next week I was doing 100 miles. You know, and you yeah. just like... It, it's road bikes, yeah? Yeah, road bikes, yeah. So, what have you got? Uh, what's my bike? Yeah, what uh, bike Cannondale is? Super 6. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, I know I Alex like is a bit of a biker. Oh, uh, yeah? Oh, cool. Yeah, um, it's sick, man. To be able to, like, get that freedom, you know, kind of... I mean, uh, that's, a, that's a long ride. Yeah. Man, so that, is, that was exactly what it was. Like, when I first started, um, like I say, in, in the uh, lockdown and that... It was, I could get out and I could go on these long rides and I was just like in the countryside, you know, on my own, on my bike. Like, I don't know, it just, it, it, it almost like took me back in time a little bit to like when you was a kid and you mm. used to go out and just have an adventure, you know, like, and uh, yeah, I just fell in love with it, man. And then like very soon after, I'd probably say, I don't know, a few months into tattooing, uh, tattooing few months into like taking up road cycling seriously like because yeah. like I said I was getting obsessed with it um I then thought oh I, you know I started watching these YouTube videos of people you know documenting their cycling so I just thought well oh, I'll start doing that like, I, I like making videos you know I like yeah. editing um I used to do that when I was younger with the BMX in you know I used to make these like videos and stuff you know yeah and, uh, you can see, I mean, you can see why it did well, you know, because it's obviously very authentic. You've got, you're a charismatic bloke, you know, and that kind of comes <laughs> through, comes through on the camera. No, it's cool, man. And that's good. And I think that's what people want to see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's like, it's being genuine. Do you know, like the thing for me at first was like, because I was enjoying it so much, like all I really wanted to do with the videos was to just uh, try and get other people into it because I because I was thinking like I didn't really know about it before hmm. um, yeah obviously I knew people were into road cycling but I didn't really know 
like that feeling like and uh, how good it was for like your mental health and and all that you know so I, like i thought whoa if i put out a video and tell people how amazing it's making me feel then hopefully they're going to get a bike hopefully they're going to go out and feel the same yeah, and, influencing, aren't they? yeah and uh, that's it yeah <laughs> but you know it, it, yeah, it, it's a bit cheesy but like that is no, but it's a positive influence you're, I just, I just you're felt, showing another one of your passions yeah i just you? i just felt like I want other people to enjoy this, you know? And, mm. and sure enough, I do. Like now I get people messaging me daily saying like, oh, you're, you, you've you inspired me to get out of my bike. You know, like people, like they've got a bike and they haven't used it for months. And, it, and they're like, oh, I've watched one of your videos. I've gone out and got on my bike. I'm like, mate, I, when I hear that, it's I'm like, crazy. it's amazing. We had that at Bristol convention, didn't we? We had yeah, people, people coming up to him and was like, yeah, coming up to my booth. He's yeah, at a yeah, convention, man. but they're asking him about his bike. You know? bike. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mate, it's sick, man. I mean, I'm like, I can't believe it when I get messages and I'm like, I'm only really just kind of starting on YouTube with this. But like to get people to come, people are, will like actually take time out of their days to send a message and say, you know what I mean? Like oh, I really definitely. enjoyed listening to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm like, I'm, that makes it all worthwhile. Oh, you know? you're getting the good oh, recognition from it. You're getting the great feedback. From yeah. It, you know? it makes you realise and understand that you're, you're doing something that one people are liking and two you're doing something that's positive and good you know you're not it's not just a a five minute wonder yeah you know 100 yeah and you're that is genuine swapping two wheels for four as well you're a bit of a petrol head um <laughs> yeah well, yeah sim like i try i try not to be these days but <laughs> i mean am i right in thinking did you have an e60 was it m5 v10 uh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. oh I've had dream last time I'd love cars. one of them I'm a beam <laughs> man I've had so many cars over the years yeah. drifting as well yeah yeah drifting so I was like big into drifting for years um I'd knocked all that on the head now because well one it is such an expensive hobby um yeah. not that road cycling isn't <laughs> I kind of messed yeah. up there yeah. I dropped one expensive <laughs> hobby and got another new one but uh, but yeah it's so expensive and it's like um there's not that many opportunities to actually do it. Like in the UK, there's it's there's like, only a yeah. certain few uh, tracks that allow it. Yeah, and a couple of roundabouts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing. Now I'm getting older, I, you know, uh, off the record, I never used to drift on the street. Yeah. But, but now I'm getting older, I would never drift on the street because, it, I don't know, you just get more sensible, didn't you? Yeah, I'm like, nah, it's not worth it. You're aware of your surroundings. Yeah, you know. And you're in nicer cars that you don't want to be paying. Yeah. If you're yeah. Um, but, you know, but it's so like I was saying, it's like the, there's a limited uh, amount of places you can actually do it. So it's like you spend all this money on a car and then you can't actually end up drifting it, you know? Yeah, so, or doing track days and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's why I ended up knocking it on the head and, yeah, it was just like... But I do still love it, you know. And when I see someone in like a fucking like cool like drift car or something, I'm like, oh man, I want to get one again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, big question then: mm. Japanese or German? Oh, well, for drifting, Japanese. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for me, like I've had uh, three 200 SXs. Mm. Um, absolutely love them, man. They're just like they're just built for drifting. <laughs> they're just amazing. Yeah, but then uh, and the ch- like the tuning potential. Like this is going to end up like a car park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I like, for instance, tomorrow, if I was to go out and get another drift car, I would get a 200 SX. Mm. No, no, no two ways about it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like a bit of a. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it's a very typical option, and people will be like, "Oh, boring." Like, or but, an R thirty two or something. Like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it could go for that. But I mean, like, for a car that actually drifts amazing, like straight away, it's a two hundred SX. It's just, it's just the way it's made. It's just designed for drifting, you know. Yeah. Like, um, and not only that, there's so many parts that you can literally just bolt straight on yeah. because of that. Do you know what I mean? Is they're really popular? Whereas, like, you know, other cars, there's plenty of cars you can go drifting, but mm. Yeah, you're not going to have all this list of parts that you can pick from, you know. So, That's it. But, More but yeah, like German as well, like BMs. I've loved my BMs as well, you know. But I've had, I've had all sorts of cars. Now, now I'm in a toy. I've got a Land Cruiser now, so I've no. got. A, <laughs> not going to be drifting that. But no. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, uh, Is that taking? Have you got kids? Is it? Uh, no, but like you know, hopefully in the future. So yeah. That, yeah. that'd be a bit more of a family wagon. But we did a little while ago. We got a uh, Golden Retriever, so it's, we more got it for that. You know, a nice big car. We've got yeah. big dogs. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Growing up, mate. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Sick. One of the newest additions to the Ghost Cartridges range, or the Hex range rather, is the Stipple Shaders. These ones that I'm using here are like four tight threes all arranged in a row. Give you like a nice smooth stipple over a large area. Make sure you grab these now. I've got a discount code below. 
Yeah, cool, man. Um, Nipper, like, obviously, I know you keep a lot, a lot of reptiles as well. Yeah, man. Talk to me about that because you've got a bit. <laughs> a bit. <laughs> you've got you've got a bit of an impressive setup there. How yeah. um, how did that start? Um, I've been keeping like exotic animals since I was about twelve. I, I've I've just been obsessed with them. I find them fascinating. Again, it's like the lettering. It, it it's kind of therapeutic for me. It kind of calms me down. It's probably something to do with you know an ADHD trait or an obsessive compulsive trait. It's, it's I I. I, I, I fixate on them. I, mm. I'm fascinated by them. Um, like I had a, we had a, we had a family dog growing up. We had hamsters and shit when I was a kid, but I never. I don't know. They just they just fascinate me. Like mm. I've got. Um, so I I kept loads of uh, lots of animals outside of tattooing from the age of twelve up to maybe mid twenties. And then um, when I, I, I left my, my family home, like I left my mum's and I had my bedroom at the time was like, <laughs> I had these, I had these mirrored wardrobes, you know, like the sliding glass door yeah, wardrobes. Yeah, yeah. I had them and, and I was like, I got so deep into it. I started tattooing and I was earning good money for, for a young guy. And I was like, right, what am I doing with all this money? You know, <laughs> so your first thing is I'm gonna buy some lizards. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's first thing they think. Yeah, no, listen, mate, I ain't normal, but <laughs> uh, but so I converted these wardrobes. I remember I had this money. I was like, right, I can like. I had a couple of like. I had, I had, I had a, a checkered garter snake, which is like a North American version of a grass snake. That was like my first, my first reptile that I had, and um, and then the obsession with it come in more like. Um, I started to get more money come into my life. Um, I was living at home and I had these wardrobes and I converted the wardrobes. Yeah. I took all the doors off and there was like this one little strip of shelves in the middle for my clothes, which was like five <laughs> shelves that I've crammed all in my clothes into. All the- and then everything else, I just split it up into huge vivariums and like made it all myself. And I did carpentry at college. I did a bit of that work here and there as well. So I kind of had a bit of a know-how for DIY. Um, and I, and it, like with the lettering where I found it therapeutic, I even got like obsessive with just building the enclosures themselves, okay, you yeah. know, and then making like the hardscapes and the landscapes for it and there was a, there was an artistic side of it as well as having passion just for the animals mm. you know um, and yeah I, I, I can see how I you get out. like man like I, yeah it's, I was so into it and I, I kitted out of my room and my mum she's she's petrified of reptiles she hates them mm. you know if it ain't got fur on it she don't care you know what I mean she's like she loves her cats and her dogs just... and a little pet guinea pig that she yeah. had and and then I'm there going like I went from like a the a garter snake which is like a small kind of grass snake to like I started buying like 10 foot Burmese pythons and <laughs> boa constrictors you and, you're keeping, you're keeping this, and you're keeping this in your bedroom so uh, yeah in my bedroom at one stage I had all those wardrobes that were like they I had what's going on in the night are they not moving around uh, in the yeah night but and- I don't know it kind of made me feel more safe it was weird like I kind of like if if not for me <laughs> <laughs> I love visions of it getting out yeah, and yeah, yeah, coming that, in the no yeah. to be honest like my enclosures were good like I, I, I was I was I was into it like they were they were real real like solid solid mm. they were they were safe they were as escape proof as I could make them. Obviously, people that might be watching that may keep animals themselves, especially if you keep exotics, you do have stuff to get out. You do. That's just what happens. Right? Yeah. Is that part of the fruit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's there's there's definitely, there's yeah. definitely yeah. something there, like, in there. And and I kind of like I started keeping smaller stuff, and then when I started getting into the bigger stuff, then it was like, okay, this this could potentially kill me. Mm. You know. But then that was more of a thrill of a, of yeah of the excitement, and I wasn't just going and I wasn't then just going and buying like at one stage those wardrobes were filled up with some raw pythons like all different. I was getting into the morphs like there's a lot of people these days that breed different different um, like colours as you like of of, uh, of ball pythons and. Um, I was getting into them and I had like a whole racket breeding racking system of them. And then above that, I had a huge like um, enclosure that I'd made for, I got into green tree pythons. They're a little bit more advanced. You know, you have to like simulate the right humidity and heat and stuff for them. And then what are you feeding them? Uh, frozen Ford rodents. 
or chicks so like yeah. small mice rats yeah you can buy like frozen guinea pigs rabbits this and that depending on the prey item for the size of the animal Fucking you know up. but as i got into it more i was buying more aggressive stuff and and larger stuff and i was like no, i'm bored of this now what about like tarantulas no i hate spiders yeah <laughs> hate them petrified of them no. don't like them yeah. and i've got friends that breed them i've got friends that uh, <clears throat> that keep lots of them i remember being in a, a friend of mine's reptile shop once and one of the work experience kids that was there come up and put a tarantula shed on my shoulder oh, no. and I screamed no, no. the my, house my, down my and I the shell pegged it out of the shop. Yeah. No, like, no. I can't do them. I, I've done, like, I've kept mantids and um, different forms of stick insects and jungle nymphs, all things like that, like different, like, invertebrates, but... Yeah, man, spiders is not for me. Like, I appreciate them. I think they're, they're, they're amazing animals and stuff. I wouldn't want to hurt them or anything, but it's just not for me, man. No. No. I, but then again, like, I was saying to him earlier, like, oh, I'd love to, in 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 uh, Keeping Exotics, you can take it a step further and you go into what we call the DWA side of things. So that's like the Dangerous Wildlife Association. So then you have to go and, like, get a, apply for a license so that you can keep um dangerous things like venomous snakes or crocodilians or yeah. big like which is big probably dangerous species enough. stuff yeah because you need to know your shit with that um i've just recently bought some snakes that i was saying to you earlier um they're like on their their class was mildly venomous and they're 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 rear fanged <laughs> they're not front fanged they wouldn't Thank kill you that. Like just, if, make, just, just make, make it a bit weird. For me, like, <laughs> you can, oh, you no, can no, have no, you can have nausea. You can you can like if you're allergic to like wasps or bees things, you might go anaphylactic shock. But yeah. have you ever you been bitten by doing, one? I guess that's the question. Isn't it? Have you ever been bitten by, a snake? by by one of these one of your pets? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. I've been bitten loads over the uh, years. Have you had any adverse reactions? Um, the only time where I've had a have had reactions is um, I've got a huge marine tank in my studio mm. and. Um, I started keeping lionfish, dwarf species of lionfish, and they're venomous. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I've been stung by three different types, three different species. And these are only like the dwarf species. Like you can get the normal black and white volatile lionfish that you see on like Discovery. They're really spiky. Yeah, they've got the big like fan fins coming off. Like mm. and th those things are like two foot in diameter and they pack a wallet. Like they're taking you to hospital. Yeah. And I was keeping the dwarf species of these. And every time I got done, like, you can feel the venom pulsating up your arm. It's like hot fire. <laughs> it makes you want to pass out. Yeah. It makes you feel sick. Um, like, heart palpitations. You're thinking, oh, shit, like, I need to I'm go to hospital. Die. I'm going to die. Yeah. Again, and, yeah. And I've been, oh, you know, touch wood, I've been all right each time. Yeah. Um, until a friend of mine was like, you do know, like, if you get stung by them too many times, sometimes it can not build up immunity and you can actually build up in your system and then you can you can have anaphylactic Ooh. shock and you can do this. So do you think you'll kind ever, of, do you think you'll ever, like, stop or do you think you're kind of where, no. where are you no no I love it I'm so passionate if I wasn't tattooing I would be working with animals 100% mm. hands down yeah like it's the money that I get from tattooing in the jobs aspect of it once my bills are paid, anything else, it just goes straight on my animals. Yeah. But I'm That's so passionate about it. And they keep me going, man. Like, I'll be honest, like, my circle's so small now, but I prefer animals to people. I really do. You know, right, I don't right, get after no, lockdown, yeah. Fuck yeah, I don't get no bullshit. They don't talk back to you. They don't, you know, give you shit. Like, yeah, okay, it's stressful and it's expensive. Like... And 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 depending on how many you keep and what species you keep, like yeah. now I keep quite a lot of large species. Mm. Like I keep monitor lizards, I keep reticulated pythons. They're the biggest snakes in the world. I keep dwarf bloodlines of those, so they're slightly smaller. But like my biggest snake at the moment, she's eleven foot. Fuck yeah, you know. Man. And really, Did you get like out of the tank. And yeah, stuff? I get her out. Yeah, I get her out. I shouldn't really get her out on my own. <laughs> Even though I trust her and okay. I work with her every day, like I see her every day. So what's the worst? So she could go like. Out if the house, into the street, down to the like attacking people. <laughs> Start eating nah. people in the pub. Like. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Is that is that she's, what She's happen? not big enough to eat anyone. Okay. Like, don't get me wrong. If you're not experienced with an animal like that, um, yeah, if it gets around your neck and wraps you up, it's going to choke you out, and yeah, it could kill you that way. It's not going to eat you up, but it definitely suffocate you. Yeah. But you, this is the thing. 
It's the same with like regulations. We're saying about things being regulated in towing. Yeah. Things need to be regulated in the animal world as well, mm. you know, because there's people that are buying dangerous animals and having them as pets and they don't know how to care for the animal. They're not doing the right husbandry, the right caring, the right, you know, the, the enclosures aren't right. The, 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 the climate that they're trying to reproduce for them isn't right. The, the, the diet isn't right. Mm. Um, handling goes down to yeah. a massive thing. Like I don't just go straight in and pick up an 11 foot python and just stick my hand straight in the enclosure, mm. you know? Yeah. And they're big enclosures. I have to build these myself. You know, they've got 10 mil thick toughened glass on the front of them, Shoot. right? So that they don't, they're not getting out. Yeah. You know? Um, it's a whole I, other world, man. Yeah, it's like, it is. It's so, man, you can I, go so deep into it as well. Speaking to you though, like I get it now. I don't think I've actually ever sat down and had a conversation with someone who keeps yeah. exotic animals, but I get it. It makes sense. You man, know? you ever afraid you want to come up and see them? Yeah, come mate. Too, see right? yeah. I, mate, the snake thing is mad. The missus can't stand snakes. You know, yeah. Do you know what? That, all that weird shit that he does. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing that's kept me from going to visit him. I, I honestly, that ain't for me. Keep making and excuses. I, I'm, I, like, I'm like, I really want to come see his shop, but I'm like, I just don't know, man. Well, they're not in the shop. They're, yeah, but I'm, it's it's still separate. Like my yeah. private studio, I've I've got a beautiful plot. Of, it's a converted stable, so it's like an L shape. One side is my bungalow, the other side is my studio, and then I've also got um, another room that is built on the back of those buildings that is for my animals is locked up all the time unless I get in there all the enclosures have got locks on yeah. them um, even the small enclosures I've got code locks on all of them mm. so everything is you know it's all safe I don't it, none of my clients see it it's, mm. it's not like it's um, it's there because I've got clients that are petrified of them but people know that you know people know, can see from my social media I don't hide anything that I've got yeah, you know? yeah of course I, I'm quite passionate Why about what I do and I'm, it's, yeah, it's you, you know, you know and I'll, I'll quite happily you know tell people stuff I don't show everyone like uh, my collection just because it's a lot it's a lot of money I don't keep stuff that you just go and buy out of a pet shop you know I buy a lot of stuff from private breeders or people that I know that import stuff or mm. you know they've had conservation programs going and yeah. I've got a pair of uh, Argus monitor lizards at the moment that are from Northern Australia and um, I was going to do a breeding program with them I'm not now um, but my friend who does YouTube channel and he does breeding programs and all that they're going to go to him I'm just giving them to him and he's going to you know do his thing with them um I can go and see them whenever I want. Um, but it's just kind of something I've had them for a while now and I want to, I mean, the price of electric at the moment is ridiculous. Like, oh my I'm God, just, I can't even imagine. I've got, it's like I'm paying even. another rent, yeah. you know, for, for what I'm, for yeah. what I'm This is the price you pay for. though, isn't it, for doing yeah. what you, um, you know. Yeah, and that's it. And I do it because I'm so passionate about it. But they're going to go to him and I'm going to whittle down my collection a little bit and keep just a few, you know, specific things, maybe a few rare species that I like um, but it's just I don't know man it keeps me going like I, I've like I said earlier I had a crazy past two years um, with massive life change ups and man like, I've been in some dark places and my animals have kept me going they've mm. kept me literally kept me going yeah man like, it's, it's made me when I've got bored of tattooing or I need something to take me away from it if, if it's getting too stressful or if I'm you know, um, I, I, I suffered for years anyway, up and down with depression, anxiety, this, that, you know, self-doubt, as a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, but man, my animals are just so consistent. Like it keeps me, it really does keep Grounded. me grounded. You know, yeah, it, 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 it humbles me. It gives me another sense of purpose. Um, like I go all out on my enclosures. Like just mm. one of my enclosures cost me two grand to build it. That's mm. just for one animal. That's before I've even put the animal in there. Yeah. That's before I've even played for the electric, the food, the, you know, misting systems, the the, the, the live plants, are like all of my enclosures are like, I'm trying to get them to like a zoo spec style, literally. Yeah. Like I'm building one at the moment. I'm going to do one. Doing I'm probably. doing one that I can't, you can... I want to see it. Yeah, man, no, no, honestly, you're more than welcome to come up. Um, sure. I'm building one at the moment that I'm... I'm transforming once those two monitors go to my friend I'm gonna uh, convert these two enclosures into one huge one that you can actually walk into mm. so yeah I'm excited yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see what it looks like man. <laughs> yeah man it's good to hear that that kind of has like given you that balance and ground you? it guess, always has always has yeah Mate, it's, 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 it is cool I mean I guess I want to just kind of ask you really as just the last sort of question is um then going back to what we said, like if you, what's the thing that kind of grounds you? Um, and also what would you be doing if you weren't tattooing? 
I mean, well, nowadays it would be obviously cycling. Like that's mm, you know yeah. that has become such a big part of my life. Um, and like I said, especially mental health wise, like has massively helped me out. So um, yeah, I mean, if I had to stop tattooing tomorrow, I would just go head first into that cycling stuff. You know, like um, obviously creating the content for my YouTube channel. Um, now, I'm now starting to get involved with companies and stuff. You know, mm. um, just yeah, just. Uh, it is like I say, it has super super helped me with with just um, yeah, just getting my head head straight, man. You know, like mm. uh, like like we said earlier, like sometimes you go through you know stages of like all this like self doubt into tattooing and um, yeah, you just sort of I don't know. Sometimes you feel like you're losing your way or something, mm. you know. And I feel like cycling has has massively helped me with that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like. It, if ever I'm feeling like just like super anxious and just like all it up in my own head or whatever, then you I just get on your bike. I can get out ride. on my bike, go out on a long ride, yeah. and all I think about is just being out, like mm, you know, yeah. it, especially on a, like a nice day or something. You know, <laughs> it's like sunny, and yeah. you know, you're just looking at the the landscape. It's, See, I think I think I think I get that from driving. Mm. Um, like oh, yeah, I'm yeah. big into cars, yeah and, I, yeah, and I think I get that from, oh, from driving. Sure, I'm all, I'm all other freedom, things as well, it? you know, and like collecting records and, you know, just mm. like, yeah, just taking time yeah. and getting out. I know you do a lot of traveling and stuff, mm. but yeah, man, I think it's great. And it's good to hear that you guys, guys are striking that balance. Um, you got to have that balance trying in to, life. Yeah. You need to. It's yeah. like the same that you get out of biking. I do a lot of snowboarding in my spare time as well. And for me, like, I haven't been in three years because of the pandemic and everything. And, I was saying to Tom this morning, saying about him maybe trying to jump on as well because we've been a few times and it's like um, that is another sense of freedom, you know, mm -hmm. like what Tom gets out on when he's on his bike. Like when, I, when I'm on my board and I'm on that mountain, it's like I don't think about oh, the stress of tattooing or bills or anxiety or and it's just me and that and I'm. it's like I'm... I don't know, it's this weird, euphoric kind of, you're in your element, aren't you? Yeah. It's like your, trouble, the... your troubles, guys. Same with you were driving, probably. Yeah, I well, do it as um... well. I'm into my cars a little bit. Okay. So when I go in, when I, I take my car out for a spin sometimes down the country lanes, like I probably shouldn't do, but I, I live in the countryside. And late at night, sometimes if I'm, you know, here, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a little rip. Because mm. then you, you are come only back. focused on that. Yeah, you yeah. come back and you're just like... What do they say? Uh, there's like a, I think it's called like there's there's some philosophers believe that that is the one of the most important like or, or the the highest state of um being that you can be at is that it's called like flow state which is mm. where you are so involved in what you're yeah, doing yeah. yeah that everything else you can't you can't see anything else you know yeah a little bit like i mean you almost get it sometimes you know if you're so into a film that like you forget where you're even sat like you're in the film yeah 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 and it's the same it's like and that i guess that would be always my goal with tattooing would be to kind of just find that where i'm just solely in it oh man how long have you been tattooing now I'm five years, yeah. so yeah, going so, into So, like, me, I had, like, I called it the five-year itch. Like, five years, I was like, this is fucking, this is still, I'm still struggling with this shit. This is, like, yeah. you know, and I, I kind of... I was, you go through waves like that at the time, yeah, you do, yeah. man. Like, I mean, even now, like, sometimes I'm like, oh, man, like... Am I like, am, uh, yeah, am I even progressing? Like, mm. you know, wh what am I doing? Like, you know, especially like I say, like with, like I said earlier with like some of my work, it, it can feel repetitive, you know, mm. sometimes like yeah. doing like, you know, portraits all the time, whatever. It's like, you do feel like, oh, am I, you know, what am I doing? You're here? just copying something all the yeah, time. Do, it feels yeah, like. yeah, I felt do, like it was. But then, but then, like I said earlier, like when you, when you make someone like so happy, yeah. then it's like, oh, no, hang on. No, <laughs> it's worth doing. You know? yeah, yeah. And that's it. And just you just got to remind yourself of that. And yeah, give yourself those breaks, doing those separate things outside of tattooing, mm. just to give yourself that clarity and make sure that you don't fall out of love with it and stay inspired. Oh, for yeah. sure. Man. Um, yeah, man. I think I really appreciate it, Dammy. I could literally yeah. sit here for hours. <laughs> um, but what I want to do is just kind of tie up the conversation. A little tradition that we always have, obviously, is, is get each guest to leave a question for the next. Okay. Um, but you were left a question. And that was. What do you think is the most important thing that's been invented for tattooing in the last few years? Cool. Um, I'm going to go straight in. And go, uh Wireless. Yeah. I was going to say the same Battery thing. machines, yeah. yeah. Wireless yeah. machines. Yeah. I, I didn't... <laughs> do you know what? Like... Obviously, earlier I said I had quite a traditional upbringing, and my old boss he hates one of stuff. He messaged me. He, mate, he, he messaged me, me about he a rotary me all the time. He's How like, can you though? 
Well, it's so like it's it's game changing. I know, but do you know? I do understand it because it's like so far from traditional, which I love a traditional time machine, man. Yeah. I think they're awesome, but I just don't use them anymore, you know. Mm. And but I do think like yes, it, it is a game changer in the sense of just having that freedom, you know, and. Uh, yeah, I was just... so against it until I went to Legacy and then Mike and Chris <laughs> yeah, and everyone they're all like I was the only one in there like <laughs> yeah. rinsing everyone's ear I was yeah. out every day yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're like dude try this out a little bit try this and then I went to I went from Coils to uh, an FK Irons Direct 2 so like a direct drive based machine but that machine was good because you could still put needle bars in it and use disposable tubes like and that like was like my crossover half. Yeah. and then I was started using carts and then I tried a few pen machines and I was like fuck this I ain't using this shit what is this it's like a Fisher price toy. I ain't you know what I mean I didn't want to know but like, I didn't want to yeah, know but they've been so refined now. Uh, all I use yeah. now is my Bishop Wands yeah so that's I'm all saying. I use mm. you know yeah. But they are the only, the, the most comfortable machine out of the pen machines I've tried, and I've tried loads. Mm. And they perform the best. Like, um, they're easy to clean, they're easy to maintain, they're lightweight. I mean, the new and ones are just. German motors, they live, they do live. As long as you don't abuse man, them, they'll live. Like, they're they'll just go so, on. they're so convenient traveling, guest spotting. I mean, oh, like, yeah. now, like, conventions and stuff, like, my setup is so, I can fit my setup. I used to turn up with, like, boxes yeah. and bags and trolleys. Yeah. <laughs> Turn up now with like one little small roller case, suitcase, mm. and a backpack. Done. Love it. Mm. Is there anything that you want to ask the next guest? What would you really want to know? And that's whether that's tattoo related or not. Um, I would probably like to ask the next guest, you know, what they think of uh, the direction that the industry is going. You know, like me and Tom spoke earlier and we spoke earlier about how you know, there's pros and cons to what's happening in the industry. So I would probably like to ask, yeah, if if the feelings are, are mutual on certain things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, well, like, the, yeah, is it, so is where, it going the question in a good is direction? Where, where is tattooing going? Yeah, yeah where yeah. is tattooing and yeah, and going? Is it a good direction or, or yeah. are we... Oh, is, I is, it coming, is it coming to a bit of a dip? Is the tattoo industry, you know, is it kind of... Is it peaking? Has it peaked? Has yeah. it peaked now? Has it, because it's become so mainstream, maybe it's burn itself out a little bit or is it going to come full circle yeah like you said about the you know everyone getting into private studios too early they're doing like an apprenticeship of like a year they're doing some little line work tattoos and they're and they're opening up private studios yeah me and Tom didn't open up our own private studios until we was 10 plus years tattooing mm -hmm. in multiple different shops yeah you know? well I'm excited I'm just excited to see where it goes you know yeah and I think as long as you have the attitude of leaving the industry better than you found it oh yeah man. job do you know what I mean jobs are good yeah, listen we, we it's, it's a part of our lives it's like we said it's not a job it's, it's a, a lifestyle it's a massive part of my life man yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, I, I get would, myself I be, worth from it yeah I do I, I honestly wouldn't be the person I was today without tone you know yeah. it's, mm. it's literally like it's been a massive massive part of my life yeah, yes. yeah. And, and it will never stop being a part of my life Mm -hmm. even if I didn't even you? if I stopped out in tomorrow it, it would still be who I am yeah you know? it's, uh, well all I would just wanted to say is like honestly massive respect to both of you I think you both yeah, smashed it too, you know individually too, and also as a pair um, and I'm excited to see where you guys take your stuff again um, I look forward to the convention because I'll be down yeah, there man. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah, excited to see it. Yeah, where it goes see, yeah. um, the final thing I want to do with you like drawing, we're going to do a little drawing challenge. Okay. Oh okay. God. Yeah. So this is this is a new this is a, this is a new thing for season two. Okay. okay. The way it works is you both get three minutes oh, and you have shit. to draw the task <laughs> that was left for you from the previous guest, but then you get to leave one for the next guest. Okay. And it's a subject matter and a style. Jeez. So. Oh, mate. What? <laughs> Sweating. So, <laughs> we've got a, a piece of A5 paper. You've got a bic. You've got a HB, a 2B, and a half mil fine liner. I am. I'm gonna give you some this or that questions while you're doing it. And I'm gonna give you three minutes to draw, draw, draw. a trad dagger. Three, two, one, go. Dog or cat? Cat, dog. Netflix or YouTube? YouTube. Uh, YouTube, yeah. Phone, phone call or text? Uh, text. Okay. I don't. Do you know what? I always used to be text, but then um, nowadays I actually quite like a phone call. I think yeah, it's like, I like that. It's, it's a, a very more, personal thing. Like, more personal, yeah. yeah. Cardio or weights? Oh, Cardio. Weights. Toast or eggs? Eggs. Uh, toast for me because I'm intolerant to eggs, so you <laughs> don't want that. <laughs> iOS or Android? Uh, iOS. iOS. 
Brauch Bau in sich. In sich. Uh, I'm in there as well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Are we going um, a big house party or a small gathering? Small gathering. Yes, yeah, small. Bath or shower? Shower. Shower. Are we going <laughs> iPad or are we going MacBook? Uh, I've got both, but I'd probably go iPad because I use it more. What uh, about you, Sam? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> iPad or MacBook? Uh, iPad, I guess. Are we going? <laughs> are we going? Uh, I'm not going to give you that one. Oh my days! Uh, are we doing pen or pencil? Uh, pencil. Wow. I'd probably go pen. I use pen a lot more. Yeah. Coffee or tea? Tea. Oh, I'd have to say tea. I'd oh, hang on. I hang don't on. actually drink either, but yeah. Hang on. Are we getting on there? Tea. Tea. If it's uh, if biscuits are included. Yeah. But if there's no biscuits available, then coffee. Yeah, like that. Soup or a sandwich? Sarnie. Oh, yeah, Sarnie, definitely. Sarnie. Are we going hoodie or trackies? Ooh, hoodie. Uh, hoodie. Beers or wine? Neither for me. Yeah, I mean, I don't buy either, but I'd have to go beer. Okay, winter or summer? Winter. Uh, summer. Script or realism? Screw. <laughs> realism. <laughs> Love that. Um, pancake or waffle? 40 seconds left. Fuck. Waffle. Yeah, there. Where did that three minutes go? Oh, Jesus. Oh, man, man, it's terrible. terrible. Yeah. Burger King or KFC? KFC. 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 Waitrose or Sainsbury's? Oh, Waitrose. Posh, mate. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are okay. we going SUV or sports car? Uh, I'm SUV nowadays. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably say sports car. Drag or drift? Drift. I've never done it, but drift. Uh, it looks cool. Yeah, drift, yeah. Snake or lizard? Snake. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> BMX or road bike? Oh, Five, oh BMX. Four, I'm going to have to go three, BMX. Two, it's... one. That's it. Pencils <laughs> down. <laughs> Oh man, man, oh that is God. fucking awful. I said, get it down, you can't. <laughs> Fuck me, man. How did you do? Yeah. Terrible. Sick. <laughs> man, I was too distracted by the questions. I couldn't even yeah, go. Yeah, no. Oh, shit. Was, you, my you, hand was shaking. If you can both bang your, um, just bang your name and sign that and just put a date on it, that'd be Fuck great. It, no, so 15th, of, 15th of January. Yeah, nice one, lads. It's been great to just kind of sit down with you and just sort of pick your brains a bit. Yeah, man. Um, it's been fun. Yeah, man. It's been good. I enjoyed. I really enjoyed it. So yeah, cheers. Thanks for being a part of it as well. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast this week. Don't forget to hit the bell icon and the follow button wherever you listen to your podcasts. And don't forget to head over to YouTube and hit that subscribe button as well. Really helps the podcast grow. And thank you so much for all the support so far. I'm Alex Lloyd, and this is a 21st Century Tattoo. Thanks for listening. How did you find that right? Yeah, good. I, I probably I swore way too much for all of that.